Oh, let's see. Get this thing. Shows us live. All right, we are live. Sorry, I was uh, adjusting the OBS. I realized I had it set incorrectly. Uh, all right, so hello, YouTube. Welcome to episode 149. Look at that, right on the verge of a... 150. <laughs> of, a, of, a, of, a, of a, what is it, mile post? Is that the, the, yeah. is that the word? Uh, episode 150 uh, in a month from now, I guess, because uh, alternating back and forth between book clubs. Uh, but yeah, um, we're here for 149. Let's go ahead and uh, hit the intro and get started. Maybe. The Dark Tower by Stephen King. The man in black fled across the desert, and the gunslinger followed. Go then. There are other worlds than these. Death, but not for you, gunslinger. It's time we had our own palaver, I think, and it's going to take a while. And yet, dauntless, the slug horn to my lips, I said, and blew. Child Roland, to the dark tower, came. We are content, one from many. Let the palaver begin. Hello and welcome to Dark Tower Palaver. This is our podcast covering Stephen King's magnum opus, the Dark Tower series, as well as the extended Stephen King universe, because let's face it, everything is at one level of the tower or another, right? Uh, and so I, my name is Tad. I'm Peter. And yeah, we're here for episode 149, uh, round table, I suppose I should say, um, just off the heels of uh, one of the best, uh, actually the best Dark Tower moment, according to our voters. According to March Insanity uh, 2023, <laughs> right? Yes, indeed. So um, that that was a lot of fun uh, it, it, to go and cover that section. Uh, yeah. It's 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 a great one. Like I, I think I said it, during that episode or in the lead up to it somewhere, that when we originally started this, there's a couple moments in my mind where it's like, I can't wait to get to X, Y, and Z. And I know the Blaine showdown. Blaine was one. The showdown, the Traveler's Rest. Yep. And then for me, it's probably like, the tower itself like those are probably the three that immediately came to mind where it's like you know and honestly when we started in 2017 or so no, spoiler no, I'm warning sorry, i'm sorry spoiler Tw warning 2015 <laughs> 2015 when we started uh i remember thinking to myself it'll be a long long time before we get to any of those events uh and I, I, I here we are i don't think we actually knew that how slow we would go with those but we do want to be yeah. meticulous with the book clubs so uh yeah you know what it, my you know if you oh, maybe yeah, go do ahead. my third moment would be because Blaine, those two are Blaine and Traveler's Rest. Obviously, are those two. You know what my third one would be? What's that? Num 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 num. When flag gets eaten. <laughs> one of the most tragic moments in the Dark no, Tower series. No, it's great. I love it. <laughs> you know. If only I had that Oland button still. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't. So we're moving on. Not yet. <laughs> it could come back. It's saved. It's just not programmed onto the soundboard. Oh yeah, I didn't delete. I don't think I deleted the file off the computer. Yeah. I mean, I'm a digital hoarder. I I'd like to say it's like I'm I'm, I'm making a choice to not delete a lot of stuff. But a lot mm -hmm. of times I just forget. Like it just in in seeds and seeds <laughs> of folders. Like in the Dark Tower Palaver folder, it is a, a mess of all kinds of things. So uh, going through it though would be something else. If you go into Tad's records, only madness will you find. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, it is nice though, because then if there's ever any kind of shenanigans or yeah. issues, I could always try to find something. But trying to find something ends up being an issue sometimes because yeah. it's quite uh, extensive. The uh, and I've got like three computers. Every time I get a new computer, I take the hard drives in the old one and move it into, like, it becomes backup memory in my new computer. <laughs> so you so, just have more and more storage yeah, space. Yeah, so it just snowballs. Oh, so. gosh. <laughs> uh, but let's go ahead and uh, get into the intro. As Peter already alluded to, um, spoiler warning, <laughs> this is a round table. So uh, there are spoilers for the entire Dark Tower series and probably some uh, ancillary spoilers for other non uh, non Dark Tower things in the King universe. Um, I don't ever, I don't feel as bad about them in general because yeah. like Kings doesn't really care about spoilers. Um, he's a lot more about the journey than he is about like, you know, he's not a sixth sense type writer. 
Yeah. Now, I do think the Dark Tower is the one exception just because there are such big moments in this series, and I think uh, some of those can be a bummer, but um, that is a spoiler warning that if you haven't finished the series, you may want to stick to our book clubs. We stay where mm-hmm. we're at or before in those episodes. We have a very small spoiler section in those, but it's at the very, very end, and you are given ample warning before we dive into it so you won't stumble into that. Uh, and you'll be able to listen to probably, what, 98% of the podcast of those episodes before we get to the yeah. spoilers, uh, and then you can just turn it off. So um, stick to those episodes if for instance you were meandering through book six right now maybe in a certain eatery going yeah. in there you know F- fun place to no. to be i think no. uh and then if you want to find the show you can find us on uh no- any number of places including apple podcasting spotify uh amazon music audible or any podcasting service of your choice although that is no longer uh google podcast is now yeah, dead, and dead and buried uh i i have definitely come to a place where i don't trust google for anything anymore because it seems like they are very good at starting projects and then abandoning them so i uh from now on i've made it to, uh, I, I think i can't remember i think it was google play music um, mm-hmm. before I had Spotify back in the day. That was where I made the decision. I'm never investing in Google anything again. They just end up buying someone and <laughs> using their stuff because they bought Spotify. No, uh, Spotify's uh, their own thing. Oh, did they make no, Spotify? They just, they just canceled. Their... It's a part of Google now. No. Isn't it? No. Oh, I uh-uh. thought it was. No, I mean, they do have their U- uh, YouTube music, I think, which is yeah. kind of similar, but it's like, uh, either way, ever since then, I don't, I don't. So yeah, if you are a. Uh, I know YouTube's part of Google. Yes, yeah. yes. That one got bought. That yes. one I know for yes, sure. Yes, indeed. Uh, but on any of those podcasting services, if you want to subscribe, rate, and review us, we'd appreciate that. Uh, that keeps Blaine the Mono from uh, zapping us with his uh, blue fire. Yeah, <laughs> blue lightning. Lightning teeth. Ugh. No, they call it blue fire, isn't it? Uh, they do, yeah. So, the yeah, the, the, the folks of Ludd. Uh, and then if you want to find us here on YouTube, you can find us at youtube.com slash darktowerpalaver. Uh, we are just off the heels of the March Insanity, which we'll be talking about later on in the uh, Palaver section. Um, but on those, that's a lot of times where you get our non-episode uh, posts during that when I do updates. Uh, so we're off the heels of that. But if you want to find um, dating back quite a ways, I know we were in the single or the double digits um, and I don't think we were that high in the double digits when we went mm-hmm. to YouTube. So there's a lot of a lot of uh, our archive that can be can be found there, uh, as well as we have the the lives every other every other week. Um, so if you're over here on YouTube, like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications, and join us live, like everyone that is here in the chat, uh, Spencer, Allen, uh, and Jill. Um, which uh, I don't know if we've seen Jill before. If we have, I apologize. Um, but it uh, d- definitely um, newer. Uh, and then if you want to find the show notes, you can do that at darktowerpalaver.com. Uh, and then that is the hub for all things Dark Tower, Dark Tower Palaver. Um, I know it is going to be a year away from or 11 months away from being useful, but I also just recently um, reorganized things and created a tab. So now there's a thing. You can, when you go to darktowerpalaver.com, you can click on things on the side, and one of them is March Insanity. But I also went through and programmed that to where now if you go to darktowerpalaver.com slash March Insanity. Hey, it'll take, we have a direct URL. It'll take you directly to uh, nice. kind of all all of the posts that are tagged uh, March Insanity. So Excellent. I know, again, I know that's 11 months from being useful, but yeah. it's there now. Uh, and then if you want to support the show, you can do that at patreon.com slash palaver. Uh, and then if you want to get in contact with the show, Peter can let you know the ways to do that. Oh, so you can email us. It's show at darktowerpalaver.com. We still have our Twitter. It's at darktowerpod. That's at darktowerpod. And then we have our blue sky. It's at dark tower uh, at dark tower palaver dot b sky dot social. Yeah, if that's not confusing yeah, enough, I know. I All wish right. I wish they could get that a little bit more. Uh, I don't know if it's like trademarked or yeah. like I don't know what it is with like if Twitter has the at. I don't, I, I don't think they could have an at thing like trademarked. Well, no, because like email had it first, right? Yeah. So, so like, I, I I don't under, I don't understand it, but yes, we are there as well. Uh, and then. Uh, we got our Facebook. It's facebook.com slash Dark Tower Palaver. Instagram's Dark Tower Palaver, all one word, no spaces. And then check out our merch. It's tpublic.com slash user slash Dark Tower Palaver. Get yourself a uh, <laughs> tad is ter- hashtag Tad is Terrible sticker shirt. Or you the know? classic. You know, that's that's the, that's the best way to go because there's no slander involved. That is the there. most refreshing drink every single time we <laughs> record is after I promote the hashtag Tad is Terrible. I take a drink and it's just like, oh, it's so refreshing. It's a- How dare you? So we got to talk a little bit before we dive into everything you got planned. Okay. About why I'm back and what's going to happen. 
Okay. Because it's it's we did a book club last time, and I was in the book club. If you didn't listen to the book club, you should. I, that, that's I was there. That, that's true. Because I do. Know I was there. Are, there. I do know so. there are some people that don't listen to the book right. clubs because they either wait for when they're reading through or whatever. I just know in general that yeah. there are some people that will be a little bit more regular with the round table. So that's true. I didn't even think yeah. about the fact that yeah, there might be people surprised. Yeah, that's yeah. why I wanted to uh, address the elephant that's in the room. That is me. <laughs> so. Um, I'm, I'm back for a little bit. Uh, we're going to see what's going to happen. Um, the, the job that I got was with the United States post office and it was, it was not fitting for me. So I left that I'm starting a new job, uh, coming up in May, uh, May 13th exactly, which is a Monday. So until then you got me back and until I find out what my schedule is, it's TBD on how long I'm back, if I'm back for good or not and everything like that. So if my schedule Permits, I will be back permanently. If not, until I can get the schedule to <laughs> permit it, then is basically what we're gonna looking at. So, alrighty, that's that's where that's the the Peter update. Live one this time instead of you <laughs> reading it. So, indeed, indeed. Yeah, um, glad to be back though. I missed it. Yeah, I missed it a lot. Yeah, and uh, all, all the torment that you will now. I don't know what you're talking about. There's never, <laughs> there's never anything bad that happens. Like I already this. see Alan got an emoji in there. In, in the chat there so i, I, I do <laughs> yeah. appreciate that um got, got gotta love that um all right then the only other thing i wanted to mention is uh peter just mentioned right before we started recording uh you like it darker is a uh, barely over yeah. a month away um it comes out on may 21st yep um so i mean it's a little bit over a month but um not too far um it is sneak it snuck up on me i didn't realize we were already in april it yeah. just is i gotta go reg- pre-order it that just didn't register in my head i think i've already pre-ordered mine so uh, definitely go pre-ordered if you have not already. Yeah, let can't, me just take care of that before I forget. Just one moment. Can't wait for our annual uh, King um, offering. So, uh, do you do you remember the synopsis for? for um, it? I can pull it up while I'm. I thought it was a collection. Um, let's see. Because yeah, that's what you said. Is stories you like it darker stories? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It, it's it is because one of them is a sequel to Cujo. <gasps> that's right. titled rattlesnakes um so yes it is a short story collection so uh, uh let's see uh pre-order one credit <laughs> confirm and see look at that alan throwing more emojis i love the spirit of it Emo- <laughs> he says emoji are evil although i did find out that there's an emoji uh, cal- uh merger on google uh emoji calculator i think is what it is so you put two of them together and you can make new emojis huh it's an abomination. Yeah. <laughs> like if you do football and the poop emoji, it's a field goal post and it's got poop flying through it like it's the football. <laughs> it's so dumb. Oh, man. I know uh, my enemy. Yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, dive on into the news. Uh, the first thing we got, Flanagan's Corner. Uh, don't really have a ton to cover, but there was a uh, interesting thing um, that uh, was mentioned on Screen Rant. Uh, they had an article uh, that wasn't really a whole lot other than just kind of the stuff we had already seen. But there was one quote I found in there, and they didn't really necessarily say where it came from. Um, but they kind of framed it in the way of saying, uh, you know, why Mar- Mike Flanagan uh, is proving that he's a perfect person to adapt the Dark Tower. Uh, and this is the quote they had from Flanagan. Again, they don't really say where they got it from, so I don't know where this comes from. Uh, but it is pretty interesting. He says, uh, he says, I'll tell you, more than half my life I've closed my eyes and been able to watch a lot of this play out. I've dreamed about this. The first shot, which comes right off the first incredible sentence of the first book, The Gunslinger, uh, I had an image just rattling around in my head since I was an undergrad. Wow. So, um, needless to say, um, I don't think there's a lot about this series that um, it would be first-time thoughts for Mr. Flanagan. Now, of course, it may be the first time he's getting it down on paper and then eventually getting it down on uh, you know on film, um, but it does sound like this has been a lifelong uh obsession at least through most of his adulthood so that's pretty cool to to read from uh good old mike flanagan um and i don't know i still want some updates here still nothing huh <laughs> still no and it's and, been a little bit hard for me to keep up on the news the last few months so you gotta you gotta remember that you're you're getting me back into the stri- cycle here yeah and there hasn't been much uh no. i mean the strikes ended and stuff uh we do know he's working on uh the life of chuck um and that's probably going to be his biggest uh ish like his biggest uh focus um, is is getting that uh, dealt with um, and finished up and ready to release before uh, talking about some Dark Tower stuff, I hope, yeah. would be the next thing. 
Um, although I did see an article somewhere else that was like, oh, Flanagan shouldn't do Dark Tower next. We well, should do another horror series first. And I'm like, I hope this person gets throat punched. Whoever, whoever wrote it, I just hope they get throat punched. Not that I, I would say no to another Flanagan yeah. horror series. But, After Dark Tower. <laughs> yeah, but to have it you know, come before the Dark Tower would be most uh I'm, I'm not going to wish violence on anyone. I'm not, I'm not as bad as Tad, but I hope they stub <laughs> their toe. <laughs> Their little toe? Their pinky toe. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, All right. And then this next one is uh, right out of the realm of uh, you never thought you'd hear this. Okay. Newly discovered giant extinct turtle named for Stephen King character. Yeah, Matron. (laughs) Did you see this? Yeah. (laughs) I did see this. I didn't hear that it it was named. I just saw that it was a giant extinct turtle. And I'm like, hey, Matron. And then I I didn't like click on the article or anything. I didn't. So. Yeah. So this is from. I I grabbed the article from uh, Emily Burnham from the the Bangor Daily News because that seemed most fitting. Uh, But this was widely reported all across the interwebs. Uh, And this is on March 15th, 2024. Uh, So. So researchers who found the fossilized remains of a newly discovered species of extinct giant turtle decided to name it after a being from the Dark Tower series. Uh, it has been named uh, uh, Pelto Salphus Matarin. All right. So got King's uh, King's fingerprints on the naming of this species. King is uh, officially like in the science community now. yeah exactly uh and one of the largest species of freshwater turtles ever discovered they lived between four forty thousand and nine thousand years ago in the brazilian amazon and were nearly two meters long jeez that's a giant turtle <laughs> that is indeed uh one of the scientists who discovered it told cbs that she was a huge king fan and suggested they name it based on the dark tower series and it so i was gonna say okay i was hoping that they were gonna say it because Matron has a little bit more in it than in Dark Tower. So. I don't know about that. Yeah, he does. <laughs> He's actually in it. He's not even. He doesn't even make an appearance in the Dark Tower. Uh, and then the last little bit I found interesting here: while there are thousands of species named for fictional characters from sources including Greek mythology, Shakespeare, Mark Twain, J.R.R. Tolkien, Dune, Game of Thrones, DC, and Marvel Comics, uh, Disney, Star Wars, Star Trek, and SpongeBob SquarePants, and Pokemon, this is believed to be the first species ever named after a Stephen King character. All right. So, uh, jumping into quite the the realm there, uh, everything from Pokemon and SpongeBob SquarePants to Greek mythology. That's quite the pantheon of uh, naming yeah. <laughs> naming nomenclatures. But uh, yeah, I think it's uh, pretty cool. There's also like an artist rendering of uh, said uh, turtle. I don't know what um, vermin are around it, but um, I'm looking at it right now. Giant freaking thing. They got a picture of it with one of the discoverers. They said it's two meters long. But they didn't cover how wide it is. It looks like it's almost as wide as it is long. So it's a giant freaking thing. Yeah. It's huge. Interesting. Uh, but no, I think it's really cool, man. This uh, this obviously uh, hit um, you know, pretty widely on the internet, pretty widely in the Stephen King realm. Uh, it is pretty cool. I would love at some point for someone that talks to Stephen King to ask him about this. You know, I couldn't imagine what that would be like to it'd be you, like cool you just make up a name for something and then decades and decades yeah. later like a species of animal is named after your so creation. the turtle the turtle holding up the earth that's not stephen king's invention just the name of the turtle is yeah okay yeah yeah so uh, i always thought stephen king made it up so when i started when i found out that it was like from other stuff i was like oh okay that makes sense yeah <laughs> like <laughs> little self-discovery yeah, um, and I, for me, of course, my first uh, experience with a giant turtle is from the never-ending story, the giant sneezing turtle. Oh, yeah. That's a uh, wee little tad at age four or five watching that show. Tad um, capybaras. Is that what they are? Yeah, those I are can't, capybaras. I can't tell with the tiny screen I could see here. Yeah, so that's, that's, that, that's capybaras right that, there. That's unfortunate. <laughs> there wouldn't have been capybaras back in those days. Yeah. 40,000 years ago. Yeah, there were giant ones of them. <laughs> they were like elephant sized ones. <laughs> yeah, right. No, there really was. I'm Elf- not lying to you. There Elf- really was. Elephant sized. There was. Oh, man. I uh, I don't know why I don't like capybaras. They just annoy me. I don't know why. There's no reason for it, but they do annoy me. Uh, all right. Next up, we've got. Um, Speaking of Mr. Flanagan, Life of Chuck, uh, we've got Karen Gillan um, saw an unfinished cut of Mike Flanagan's Life of Chuck and, quote, didn't stop crying for days uh, is the name of the article. Uh, And this is uh, by Britta uh, DeVore from Collider on March 17th, 2024. 
Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, John looks like is uh, we'll listen tomorrow. Nice seeing Peter back. Hashtag Ted is terrible. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about the uh, slander there, but John, uh, we'll definitely see you. Good, good to see you. I'm um, glad to have you with us. Alan says capybaras were huge. They were really big, dude. <laughs> I mean, they already they are huge now. No, right? they're not. They're this big. I know, but for they're not huge. No, I'm talking like. Like no, some of them are big. You. Some of them are pretty big. Have you? I've seen some videos of them where they're like climbing out of like above ground pools, and they're uh-huh. like, you yeah, know, they're, four, they're, four or five feet tall. They're not that tall. There, there's a few I've seen that really? are really freaking big. Yeah, I didn't know they were that big. I, I know, I know. I've just said everything, Capybara. Ever since I found out they <laughs> irritate you to you, <laughs> I got to get back to you, back at you for all the penguins you send me. So yeah. I know what you're talking about there. (laughs) Where is he? Uh, All right. So um, diving into this article here, uh, ever since uh, we uh, and most of the audiences heard that Flanagan was uh, delving into King once again for Life of Chuck, we've been honestly waiting for some updates. Uh, We haven't heard a lot. We know that it got shut down um, a little bit during the strikes, but they had a dispensation from the unions because it is a independent production um, that they are then hoping to then sell to a, a studio after it was made type thing so it's not funded by the studios um but honestly i mean we know that mark hamill and uh tom hiddleston are are in it Mm -hmm. um we know the story from uh if it bleeds i believe um we haven't really heard a whole lot about this so this is actually one of the first things we've seen uh about it um and you know this isn't a final cut but it was uh the fact that there was a a cut that he was willing to show one of the actors tells me that they're probably well along into into editing uh, of course, a lot of familiar names are returning from the Flanagan family, which is something that we coined, uh, yeah. which I, I'm still sticking with. Uh, but also some new additions, such as Tom Hiddleston and uh, Matthew Lillard, um, as well as Karen Gillan is back um, after working on, with Flanagan on his second film, Oculus. Mm. Um, so she is a Flanagan alum. Uh, though, She's awesome. Though she hasn't been around for a while. Uh, Gillian was interviewed. Uh, she was a little busy with, you know, Marvel. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's all. And uh, Jumanji. Was she in that? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I still haven't seen those. They're okay. I saw, well, the first one. I saw the first one. It's okay. I still want them to just go back to the original, remaster all the animals in modern CG, because yeah. they are bad. They're bad. They are really fucking bad. Yeah. Because uh, then, then I think then you just take that movie, re-release into theaters, and you know, let everyone s- witness the original yeah. Jumanji. But I wouldn't put that in theaters as it stands. Uh, I had my daughter watch that back in like January for oh, the yeah? first time. Yeah, Which she loved it. Yeah, she, of course she loved it. Kids playing a board game and having an. But adventure. the animals didn't. <laughs> it, okay, <laughs> I thought they were terrible. My wife thought they were terrible. My daughter doesn't care. Really? Yeah, she's not to that age where she critiques movies. She's just at the age where she just watches them and enjoys them. Hmm. And also, she's the age where, it, and with her generation, movies are a rarity. Not like me and you, which all we did was grow up watching movies, yeah. TV. She doesn't. She yeah. plays. She plays on her tablet. She plays on her little fake phone that she has, like a, an old phone that has Wi-Fi but doesn't have like cell signal or anything. Yeah. So she has games and stuff like that. She so doesn't watch a lot of movies. What are the Robin Williams has she uh, seen? That one. That's it. Mm-hmm. No hook or. She doesn't want to watch movies. Like yeah. I ask her if she. I guess like, Aladdin. I, I never count. Oh, Aladdin. she has. She has seen Aladdin. I don't really count Aladdin though. I don't yeah. know why. I know it's voice. I know it is Robin Williams. Yeah. But like, I don't know. That doesn't hit the same for me as some of the other stuff that I grew up on. So Jack, Jack says, "Hi all, hi all, Tad and Peter. Great to see you guys together again and live." Uh, indeed. Thank yeah. you, Jack. Uh, welcome aboard. I am alive. <laughs> <laughs> Dad didn't d- bury me in his basement. D- despite rumors to the yeah. contrary. <laughs> uh, although I do have my crows well on the way of being trained. There's a murder of crows living I- near my house. Interesting. Like, absolutely. Like, uh, I got up, oh, what was it? Was it uh, Wednesday? Tuesday or Wednesday? My daughter's on spring break, so she's home all week. So I'm not waking up and taking her to school and everything. But I woke up early. I had a, a nightmare or something, and I woke up and... I got up and I went out into the front room and I could hear some like a commotion outside and I keep my blinds closed. And so I opened the blinds and I'm like looking out and dude, I'm not kidding. The giant pine tree right outside my window, seven or eight crows (laughs) and they were fighting like violently fighting. And like one of them like fell out of the tree and then caught itself, landed on the ground. And the like three of them came down after it. And I'm like, (laughs) That's flag. They can sense that it's flag, and they're trying to kill him because he's evil. Nah, they would serve him. They no. Lo- they, they love him. I don't think crows serve flag. 
Oh, I do. I think he just turns into one. I I, I think so. And the wolves, because he, he, he does at one point uh, embodies a wolf, and then yeah. he does, uh, you know, the wolves serve him, right? Uh, with the, I guess with, with the kids. So I would think the crows serve him as well. Just don't so. trust crows. That's all I, that's, that's all I know. Yeah, they're they're wonderful. Uh, so, <laughs> so Gillian was interviewed to promote her uh, latest project, Sleeping Dogs, and has asked about working with Mike again after all these years. And she said, "Quote, uh, you know what? Uh, it didn't feel that different. Uh, it, I was like, uh, uh, I was going into it like, okay, uh, how has he changed? He hasn't. He, he has done so many movies now, uh, but it felt the same. Uh, we're back in Alabama, like we never left. Um, if there was any difference, I suppose it just felt more." And then she pauses. Uh, I mean, he was relaxed on the first one, but maybe he wasn't. Maybe he was just pretending to be relaxed. Uh, but no, he was uh, the same Mike Flanagan and brilliant. And the movie is absolutely incredible. I saw a not finished version of it and literally couldn't stop crying for days in a good way. And I don't know that she necessarily had to say that. I would have assumed yeah. it was in a good way. Uh, but wouldn't that be funny if it turned out to be in a bad, in a bad way? way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what kind of degloving's are we going to see? In, oh, gosh. Here we go. In, in life. Mark Works Hamill, back. Tom Hiddleston, yeah. and Karen. <laughs> One of them's getting degloved. Someone is. We ha we ha <laughs> First day on set. All right, who's getting degloved? And, Raise and, your hands. Yeah. Let me see them. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, I like those ones. Th that, yeah, bring those over here. <laughs> that and uh, uh, cats are another one that he seems to get a reputation yeah. for uh, being uh, terrible to cats but uh he did defend himself in his last uh in, in the fall of the house of usher and said that uh in his story the cat that got harmed was imaginary whereas in the real poe story it was a real cat so oh, he's like geez. i was nicer than poe was so uh. <laughs> uh and then she also said uh it's a cathartic experience talking about the movie itself uh it's something dealing with the end of their life um, and it's told very in a very imaginative way, and it's just beautiful. It's a celebration of life, I suppose. I think we could all do with a bit of that. So, yeah, uh, kind of cool because again, we haven't really heard outside of some of the the nuts and bolts of all oh, they shut down production, all oh, they started back up, even though the strikes are still going. We've heard some some basic stuff like that, but actually hear like something about the film itself is pretty cool. So that's good. Uh, and then I'll have to uh, we'll have to keep an eye on uh, Karen and see if she ends up. Uh, more into the Flanagan family now, now that she's returned. Yeah, where's she going to play in Dark Tower? Prodigal son, you know, yeah. has, has returned into the Flanagan fold. I wonder if now she'll end up being a regular. Prodigal daughter? It's, son? It's daughter? A, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, the original story, yes. <laughs> um, and then Alan says, uh, carrion birds eat their own. Oh, I hope that's not what was happening outside my house. <laughs> Cannibalism? Yeah. They're, they're cannibals. <laughs> oh, let's be perfectly honest. Most e meteors, like animals, are like they don't just let it go to waste. Yeah, ask Hannibal. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Oh man. Here uh, we go again. <laughs> You, you just that was a softball lob yeah, over the middle of the right plate man. you you can't you can't expect me yeah. not to i mean i could have gone donner party yeah but at least i went fictional <laughs> although far more creepy let's just be yes. honest like i mean donner party sucks but like they're trying to survive right yeah that's but that's hannibal that's is like completely choosing to do it <laughs> yeah. when other food is available like <laughs> like there was a okay i'm not kidding someone at one of my old jobs asked me if you could try human, would you? Like, if it was socially acceptable to have, like, human at a restaurant, go to a restaurant, pay a high fee, and try human, would you? And you know what I said to them? Why would I do that when there's pizza available? <laughs> it's funny. Cody just popped in a high pots like, as right as you're talking All about. All right, so I'm talking about cannibalism. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love the spirit of it. <laughs> yes, I'm fully back. <laughs> Oh, man. Um, although I will say there is very few things I've seen on this planet as unsettling as the show Hannibal with uh, Mads Mikkelsen. Oh, really? Because the majority of the show, or at least the first two seasons that I've watched, because it's the third season. Once I watch it, it's over. Yeah. So I can't watch it. You still haven't so, watched it. No, I'm holding it off. But the first two seasons, he is a free man. And I can't tell you how many scenes there are dinner parties. And you're just house. like, wait, no, don't yeah, eat that. Exactly. And every single time someone's taking a bite of a meat, you're just like, oh, my God, what are they eating? <laughs> Cody said, so I walked in on a normal episode then. <laughs> uh, but it just it makes me it makes you squeamish because you're yeah. just like, you don't know what it is. Well, <laughs> like I Lauren, watched... Lawrence Fishburne is uh, is uh, Jack Crawford. Oh, okay. And there's one scene where he's there eating and I'm just like, don't don't eat no, that. Lawrence. Don't don't please, eat that. Please don't lose your appetite. Morpheus, something. don't do it. Don't. <laughs> 
I actually rewatched. Uh, uh, I actually watched uh, Red Dragon with my wife. Oh yeah, um, and she had never seen it. So the dinner party at the very beginning when oh yeah when he gets Hannibal confess when he gets confess what is this lovely de- yeah de- uh, uh, appetizer and he's yeah. like if I told you you wouldn't even try it and I'm just my wife just dude th- I'm not kidding I'm, I'm, I'm going to recreate it for has you. she experienced she knows about Hannibal she's Lecter watched Silence to- of the Lambs okay, okay okay but she's never watched Red Dragon okay. or Hannibal this was her reaction dude I'm not kidding I'm going to recreate it for you guys this is this is my wife. <laughs> The eyes got so big, the head tilt, and the, 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 oh my God. And then the opening credits, as it's playing, you see like the headlines, yep. and there's one point where it's like, uh, dinner guest faints during trial. Yep. And then it's like, and it says something about served, yep. whatever, and it's like, okay, so yeah, they, yep. they, uh, they, were served the, they flutist. were served, uh, <laughs> Benjamin Rasfell. Uh, next up, taking a little bit of a turn away from cannibalism. Well, yeah. Not a far turn away from it. Um, it turns out Salem's Lot. Will be coming. What? But not to theaters. Oh. Uh, Stephen King's Salem Lot, Salem's Lot pivots from theatrical to max streaming release 2024 sometime. Oh, okay. Um, as I said, though, not a far turn from cannibalism, though, right? No. Um, uh, let's see. Well, it's not cannibalism. They're not human. Uh, Vampires aren't human, sir. They're a different creature. Yeah, but they were. I don't know. That <laughs> seems cannibalistic to me. Uh, so this is by Anthony D. Alessandro from Deadline on March 12, 2024. So Max has made it official uh, that New Line's feature film based on King's 1975 novel is skipping theaters and is going sh- uh, to streaming on Max. Though no date, solid date has been given. It does sound like it'll be this year, but n- we don't know when, oh, okay. um, which is unfortunate. This is very interesting to me because the moron in charge over there has openly stated multiple times that he opposes straight to streaming. Um, that's why I've been thinking, as we've really haven't heard nothing for a couple of years now. I thought this movie was gone. I, I never thought yeah. we'd see that. I never thought it would see the light of day. Wait, don't we um, have like a finished Batgirl movie? That's yeah, that got completely canned and basically like, written off for a yeah. tax write off. Like they're not never going to release it. Yeah, yeah. So that's where I thought Salem's Lot was going. Uh, me too, because because it's the same studio. Yeah, it's, so. it, it is the same studio, and like I said, the guy has openly said that he does not believe in a straight to streaming release for any kind of yeah. film. Uh, so it's just very interesting. Um, of course, we just covered not too long ago. King tweeted about the film, saying that it was not bad. Uh, he doesn't know why Warner Brothers it wouldn't give it a chance. Uh, I know there's some people trying to connect dots and saying that maybe King forced their hand in a way. Um, I don't know. I yeah. don't know if that's. I, I mean, I know King I is King, but I don't know that he really has enough influence to like stop yeah. the studio. I, I, wonder, I mean, if he had, if he had influence to stop a studio, yeah, there's we, there's, there's, there's several there's, things in the past that we could have been like, um, stop that. Yeah, please, <laughs> like, yeah, please stop that. Like, um, but yeah, I, I, so I, I'm excited. I'm 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 uh, definitely welcome to seeing it. I wish I could see it in theaters, uh, but to be able to see it at all is is pretty great. Um, so either way, constant readers and viewers can rejoice that at some point we'll be able to stream this new adaptation of Salem's Lot, uh, which is the first theatrical or film version of Salem's Lot we've ever had. Oh, both it's of the other ones were TV adaptations. TV series, yeah. Oh, so, yeah. I've never uh, seen either of those. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think the the first one is is pretty well regarded. The second one, I I hear mixed things. That's the one with Rob Lowe, right? Rob Lowe, yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, I always forget the guy's name. Um, he plays Zephram Cochran in the Star Trek series uh, in First Contact. The guy that discovers lights, uh, warp speed. Uh, he plays uh, F- uh, Father Callahan in the second version. So um, let's see. Um, Jack says a uh, few have done uh, more than Hannibal to reduce their carbon footprint. <laughs> I'm not going to touch that one. Oh, uh, and then uh, uh, Jack also says, uh, wait, is the HBO boss a big moron or a little moron? Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm not a fan. A, that's I'm, a dad joke right there. I, I'm not a fan of that guy at all, man. But I will give him some credit here that we are actually going to see this movie because I, I didn't expect it. Um, so as part of that, um, I did uh, throw it back on the big movie board. Oh, yeah. Let so, me see the big movie board. Uh, I haven't seen this for a little bit. Yeah, I just uh, and it's actually changed since the last time. It used okay. to, of course, since we moved from Google uh, uh, slideshows to doing Ooh. it here at OBS. So, um, yeah, Salem's Lot. I threw it back on there because I deleted it um, some time ago because it just seemed hopeless. Um, so I didn't think it was worth uh, taking up a space for it when it seemed like it was dead in the water. So, uh, but it is uh, it is on, on the way, it sounds like. All so right. looking forward to that. 
Uh, and then next up, this is uh, pretty fun. The New York Times, it's special bargain prices. Yeah. Ah, Jesus Christ. <laughs> you can't just change slides to a monkey like that on me. Sure I can. The Monkey, Stephen King adaptation with Theo James, also stars uh, Tatiana Mosley, Elijah Wood, Christian Co- uh, Co- Con- Convery, uh, Colin O'Brien, Rowan Campbell, and Sarah Levy filming raps. Dude, that I read that wrong. I thought that said Conan O'Brien. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Holy crap. Uh, all I can say is uh, deadline. I don't know uh, why the fuck your headlines are 75 words long, uh, but this is by uh, Andreas Wiseman from Deadline on March 28, 2024. Um, They're trying to get as many words in those Google alerts that you have set up. Seriously. And that, that might be what it is, but I think it, um, the, the email things I get, I think, scan the article, too, not just the headlines. So oh. I don't know. Sometimes there are- there, You there, can there, set it to just headlines, though, right? I don't know. Oh. I don't know. Because um, I get all kinds of stuff. Like, yeah. I'm getting a bunch of uh, Game of Thrones things for the House of the Dragon because yeah. the uh, uh, I just blanked on his name that played Jake in the movie uh, is playing the Stark uh, in the in the second season. He's playing like, Jacob Starks that played Jake Chambers in the movie, the Dark Tower movie. Oh, okay. Um, oh, I'm blanking shoot. on his name, uh, but he pl- he's playing uh, one of the more prominent Stark uh, uh, actors. Stark character so basically ancestor of uh of eddard stark from the first season of game of thrones so tom uh, taylor tom taylor so every time an article mentions him they're always mentioning dark tower in parentheses because that's yeah i mean he's done some other things but that's what they keep tagging him in. so i keep getting all these things through my, through my email because like and and again it's not nowhere in the headline but yeah so i know at least i get my stuff from from uh in in the articles as i well. watch house of the dragon jazz worth it oh yeah i really i've i've enjoyed the fuck out of the show is this I, one season so far yeah just one season so okay. far uh i think the only thing to know that's different and it pushed put some people off is i think it covers 20 to 30 years of time so there's a point there's a point where, where they, they you did tell me about this yeah, where there's, there's a, a point huge... where it jumps and you have characters actually change actors. Yeah, and that's because you go from a kid to an adult. Yeah, exactly. And that's just not normal. I mean, there's yeah. not a lot of shows that do that period, let alone uh Game of Thrones like every season's always taking place over like weeks or months, not yeah. years and decades. So that outside of that though, I've I really enjoyed the show quite a bit. Uh so diving in here, um so horror movie The Monkey based on Stephen King's short story wrapped shooting a week ago. Uh, and the full cast was just announced, and this was on March 28th. So it's been wrapped for a bit now. Um, and, of course, you're real excited to go see The Monkey, aren't you? Dude, hell yeah. Let's that'll, go see it. That'll be fun. Uh, I'm sure Hayden will have to join us as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as long as no real symbol monkey appears. No comment. Uh, joining uh, Theo James. Theo James was previously announced for this. I think he's the only one that we've actually had any announcement for. But uh, joining him includes uh, Tatiana uh, Maslany, from, um, which is from She-Hulk. Elijah Wood from Gr- The Green Room. <laughs> Not really. They, ha- they said Lord of the Rings. But to me, that's what I would do if I was a writer is I'd like just throw in some random yeah. movie. <laughs> Sin City. <laughs> Where he doesn't have a single speaking word line. <laughs> uh, so weird that he went from Lord of the Rings to that. Yeah. <laughs> like, all right. Uh, Christian Coverney from Sweet Tooth. Uh, Colin O'Brien uh, from Wonka. Rohan Campbell from The Hardy Boys. And Sarah Levy from Shit's Creek. Uh, as we previously covered, the Master of Horror, James Wan, is producing. Uh, and then we have a uh, synopsis here. In the monkey, when twin brothers Hal and Bill discover their father's old monkey toy in the attic, a series of gruesome deaths start to occur all around them. The brothers decide to throw the monkey away and move on with their lives, growing apart over the years. But when mysterious deaths begin again, the brothers must reunite to find a way to destroy the monkey for good before it takes the lives of everyone close to them. Yeah, ready. So, Let's go see it. <laughs> that sounds really fun. Uh, Theo James uh, plays the twins in later years, and cover, uh, Convery uh, plays the younger twins so that okay. is how they're splitting it up um yeah it's pretty fun i also always love it when it's uh, a single person playing a set of twins because all throughout things especially when they're younger kids they always cast twins to play a single person right <laughs> so it's always funny when they swap it and they're just like one person's playing twins yeah i always love it it's just i don't know why it's just so opposite right it's interesting because like the olsen twins right yeah, they were, yeah, that was famous. one character right and, yeah. and because they can only use uh, kids on set for like four hours, so it's like you know if you're doing a twelve hour day, like cool, get twins and you could do eight you hours swap, with them. Yeah, you swap them. Swap out. them out. Yeah, 
um, get triplets. Tag out. Get triplets, and then you, you can go. then you can almost then you can go the full day. Actually, yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, yeah, so that is uh, the the film is wrapped, uh, and that um, rounds out the cast. Um, be interesting to see Elijah Wood in there. Yeah, um, haven't seen him in a minute. Yeah, he hasn't been around much, has he? He's been doing a lot of music stuff, from what I understand. Oh, really? So, like yeah. Broadway kind of stuff, or no, like music, music. Oh, like music, DJ. Music. Oh, okay. Crazy stuff. So hey, he made a buttload off of other movies, so why not? Enjoy. Yeah, yeah. Do do what you want to do. So I never, sure. I never fault the the guy from Harry Potter, Robert. Uh, I think it's Robert Grant is how you say his name. He just made a fortune off of the Harry Potter movies, and then he's just living his best life. He bought an ice cream truck and just gives out ice cream. Yeah, like that's the kind of thing that I would do. <laughs> you know. And me, I would just drive around in an ice cream truck with an em- with an empty. So when kids come up, sorry, I'm out of that one. I'm out of that one. I'm out of that one. And then I just drive away. <laughs> all I have is like lemon ice cream, like the worst flavor of ice cream. That's all I have left. I, I'm going to get a company to R and D me some carrot flavored ice cream. Oh. <laughs> Rupert Grin. That. Thank you. That's right, Cody. Rupert is his name, not Robert. Oh, uh, I don't know who it is. Who is it? Anyone I would know? Uh, Harry's best friend, Ron, red haired. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've definitely seen seen pictures yeah, of, yeah. of the three He looks kids. like Ed Sheeran. Interesting. I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. Like, they're interchangeable almost. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, it's scary. Like uh, Kira Knightley and... Uh, Natalie Portman. Natalie Portman. Absolutely. Um, Dude, for the longest time, I mixed those two up. Yeah, I mean, it, I, they were literally cast to be interchangeable yeah. in Star Wars, so... Yeah. Um, now, one thing I will say is I do wonder if there will be any merchandising to go along with the monkey. Ugh, I hope not. <laughs> you know, if I didn't have to import a symbol monkey or Jolly Chimp is there, what they're yeah. actually called. If I didn't have to import one from Japan, it would be mighty handy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So next up. I like, um, that, I like that you struggle to find the one because those things are evil. <laughs> <laughs> Although I do think there is actually would be something very uh, nice about it if it were in like a package with all Japanese writing and stuff. Doesn't that seem a little bit more haunted? Like if, that, it's, if it's something that just come, screams, don't open it. Like it's come, don't touch it. Yeah, it's come from a distant yeah. land, and you know the only thing would be better is if I could find some creepy like you know shop with all kinds of assorted things and i could buy well, it like there. like your where he bought gizmo from in, yes, in gremlins exactly, like exactly. that it's exactly that's the exact kind of place i would buy <laughs> both um a symbol monkey and an ouija board that's where i want to buy them is a place oh like that i don't want to go to fucking toys or not walmart buy, no fuck that i don't want to go to that sh- place like that and buy an ouija board order them I, off amazon i want to go somewhere where some lady that looks like she was probably a witch or is a witch is going to sell it to me cackling and do you, you know uh, do you th- do you think it would be bad if we ordered a Ouija board and had it delivered to Hayden's house? <laughs> <laughs> Just put a little note in there, a gift from you, and put some uh, some like Abraham Lincoln or someone's dead, a uh, dead person's name. <laughs> Do you see that one where the uh, the the grandma that was uh, close to death? Bought a bunch of Ouija boards for her grandkids, so when she died, they were given a Ouija no. board. And she's like, well, "Let's stay in touch." <laughs> That's the kind of shit you're gonna do. Oh, it's it's glorious. Oh Lord. Um so the next uh let's see. Let me yeah. The next uh one is actually uh interesting because um uh Alan's saying so simple Ouija board from Target Black. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's just it just there's something about it and then the fact that it's like the Parker brothers or whoever. Yeah. Like it's like, yeah, I want one that like looks like the Jumanji board yeah. from Jumanji. That's the kind of Ouija board I when want. When you open up the Ouija board and there's a human tooth inside, that's what you that's the experience yeah. you want. Still some blood on it too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I should look at what is that um, that one where people make stuff for people online and then sell it. It's like uh, st- uh, like people. Etsy? Could, yes, I need yeah. to, I need to look at Etsy and see if there anyone makes like a you know one that looks like it was haunted. Yeah, exactly. Not like it's a Parker Brothers fucking toy. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, David says I'm visually impaired and I don't think they made a Braille Luigi board. Prejudice Afterlife. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. We need to get, um, and also you need to go uh, do an audible one, you know, that maybe like speaks it for, for, uh, you know, like, uh, or I guess you could do that's the same as the same as Braille. There, we just yeah, we need some uh, accessible Ouija boards is what we need for sure. Yeah. Um, do you, oh, they absolutely sell them. Etsy has one for fifty bucks. Wooden Ouija board. It's red instead of like the brown. Oh yeah. 
It looks... Oh, it's got, like, demon symbols. It's got a pentagram drawn right. on it. I will be looking that up later. <laughs> Want me to send you the link? <laughs> yes, please. All right. Um, so next up, uh, yesterday was a big day in King history. April 4th? 5th. 5th. Today is Today's the 6th. The sixth. Time has no meaning right now. April 5th in King history. Mm-hmm. That, you got me. 50 years ago, yesterday... Carrie was published. Good Lord. So 50? 50 year, 50 year, the 50 year mark of Stephen King. Because that, that also would, would imply that is the launch of Stephen King's career, right? Because um, I don't think most of us would count like all the pre stuff that he wrote yeah, that yeah. wasn't getting published or was just getting published in magazines. Like, yeah, that's kind of like the, the indie, like the, when a band has like their indie tracks or demo tapes or whatever. No, but like when they finally hit, hit it big. Um, so not only is it the 50 year anniversary of Carrie, but I would say it's the 50 year anniversary of Stephen King's public. Uh, like massive, uh, like the career. Out, the out, the the coming out day for Stephen King. Yeah, because like he had success where he was able to write and make a little bit of money before yeah. that. Gunslinger was sold to before that, and everything and like stuff that in parts. Yeah. Was before that he started making a living. Yeah, off of that. he wrote like the Long Walk, but it was right. in a, in a chat, in, like in a drawer somewhere, and then he published it later. Certainly, but yes, his his moment of like. Here I am. I just got a, a a novel published by a major publisher, um, and then eventually went on to obviously do well, sold a lot of copies, and made him you know uh, put him put his name on the map. That is as well fifty years ago. So kind of cool. Like um, it'd be one thing if it was just some random book, but no, this is literally the first book. So it's Carrie. It's it's I'll, it's still one of my favorite. I love Carrie. Yeah. In fact, I haven't read it for a while. I need to reread that one. Yeah. There you go. Sorry, I was sending that link for that Ouija board to you. <laughs> David says uh, Audible would just be a seance, wouldn't it? And that sounds fun, too. Hey. Because I said, like, an, an auditory uh, a yeah. Ouija board. He said that would just be a seance. And, hey, don't threaten me with a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Hayden when we need him? He would have been gone. Even if he was in here and didn't. <laughs> out. He would. Yeah, he would have left by now. I mean, now, you got that sure. monkey up on the screen. I mean. Uh, Cody, Surprise, I'm still here. Cody also guessed it um, that it was Carrie. David said 50th anniversary of uh, There Will Be Blood. I mean, that's an alternate title yeah. for Carrie. Yeah. For sure. uh, but yeah, so the first uh, we have a couple things that are somewhat related to that. The main one here um, is this, uh, I guess, like an op ed um, type thing. Um, but it is uh, Stephen King's first book is 50 years old and still horrifyingly relevant. And this is by Margaret Atwood. And I put in this one, I worded this different for the New York Times because she is not from the New York Times uh, on March 25th, 2024. Um, and she uh, first my first note here. First of all, I don't think it needs to be said, but I will say it just in case. But Margaret Atwood is also not just a writer for the New York Times, but she's a legendary author in her own right. One of her most famous works is The Handmaid's Tale. Um, she's, uh, yeah, so she's been around for a long time. So it's kind of a really great author writing about another great author and, uh, you know, his work that's now 50 years old. So, uh, and Jack opening up a can of worms. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I guess for the, for the people that aren't here in the chat, we could also read it. Yeah. Uh, Jack says, ah, oh, the great protagonist, Carrie, and then a winking emoji. <laughs> emoji. <laughs> that, that was a good debate. That, that got a little heated. I did. <laughs> got a little heated there. Uh, so, um, so this is actually adapted from an essay that she wrote for the anniversary edition of Carrie that was published uh, this month by Vintage. Uh, and this article is on March 25th. So if that is truly this month, that means it would have been last month now. Um, but it sounds like there's a 50 year anniversary uh, edition of Carrie that um, she Ooh. wrote an essay for that. This is t kind of cobbled from. And, uh, of course, I'm not going to read the whole thing, um, but I do have some highlights I, I thought was uh, kind of cool. Um, so she says that Carrie burst onto the scene in 1974 and made, King, uh, made King's career and says it sold millions of copies and inspired four films that have been passed on. And, and the story itself has been passed on from generation to generation. Um, and I will say as a pause there, uh, I think that's true, man. Like, the, you know, 20, 2013 was the last Carrie uh, film. Um, and then I'm trying There's to remember. in the work, isn't there? I, I'm trying or to remember a TV show because I remember there was a, a bad Carrie sequel uh, at one point because she mentions four films uh, being inspired. But either way, uh, but I remember yeah. in 2013 when that came out, uh, uh, the one with um, uh, Julianne Moore playing Carrie's mom. Uh, I just remember thinking that like watching that one was it was like this is just a timeless story. You know, and I never really had thought of it that way. But it's like, you know, yeah, they it's different because the girls now have cell phones or whatever. Um, 
That's one of the things I social loved media? about that. I don't remember if there was social media or not, because 2013, I guess. Yeah, there was. MySpace and Facebook existed in 2013. Yeah, but I just don't know if it was part of the movie. I don't know if yeah, that was. Cause that's how the bully got caught, is she was making fun of Carrie by posting video, the video she made making fun of her onto social media, and they had her phone. And so the dad's like threatening to sue. It's one of the things I loved about the okay. is when they modernize it and they actually acknowledge the advancements instead of just ignoring them. Yeah, it pisses me off when they do that and they just modernize a, a movie just because. Yeah, but like, if you're going to modernize it, acknowledge technology. Like yeah, that's that's the real world. And so the the dad's a lawyer of the bully, and threatening to sue the school and everything like that. And the principal's just kind of taking it. And you're like, come on, stand up for Carrie and everything like that. Yeah. And then finally he's like, all right, well, then we're going to lead off with this. And he like shows her phone showing the video of, he asked for her phone and they show the video of Carrie um, that she uploaded and Carrie's in her underwear. And that's uploading a teenage, an underage person in, I think that's what I think that's what the principal says. Like that's pornography, yeah, and everything like that. Like so, we'll we'll make sure that the police and everything like that get involved. Mm. Then I never watch it. I think so. I, I I just remember being like, yes, that is over a decade ago, which is nuts to think. Yeah, that, that movie eleven came out years ago. ago. Um, yeah, but now it, we just need a Shining remake. Yeah, I mean, I still want to. You still are the yeah. champion for I, that. I still want a, a readaptation. Although yeah. Doctor Sleep has taken the edge off that a bit. Yeah. Because yeah, the do- the Doctor Sleep movie oh, so good. took some elements from the the Shining that make it would make it a little bit difficult. Maybe or maybe not difficult, but it would it would make it a, take a little bit of the punch away because you just took kind of the ending of the Shining. I decided to carry a uh, 50th anniversary hardcover to my uh, wish list. Yeah. Uh, so then she recaps uh, that it was King's first published novel, um, but it started uh, as a short story for a men's magazine, and she marvels that um, that he would write a short about menstruation in a magazine that King called uh, King himself called a magazine for guys uh, that just wanted to look at pictures of cheerleaders who forgot to put on their underwear for some reason. Um, she yeah. she says that she's not sure why uh, she thought that men would dig this story, uh, but and then he ended up giving up, throwing it away, and, and it was obviously saved by his wife Tabitha, probably one of the most famous Stephen King stories, I would think. Right, it's one of them. Yeah, it, absolutely. I mean, it's it's up there. Uh, who pulled it out of the trash, read it, and says that she wants to know how it turns out. Um, and then, of course, it, she doesn't mention it in this article here, but we also know that Tabitha also offered him help for any of the female aspects of the story that he was. He, yeah. That's what he felt really uncomfortable about um, is writing for, you know, teenage girls like that wasn't something he was necessarily that's an familiar with. That's an interesting topic. You got me. You got my head buzzing with it is what is the most famous like or infamous Stephen King story? The Stanley. The, oh, the Stanley the is Stanley, one yeah. like the, oh, inspiring the overlook is one. That's, the other one that also instantly popped into my mind is that. He finished Pet Cemetery and then went, well, no one's going to publish that and threw it in a drawer for like three years or something I don't know if like that, that one's in the same, the same vein, though. I, I don't know if it is, but it's famous. Everyone yeah. knows that Pet Cemetery was like well, yeah. so dark that yeah. he was like, no one's ever going to publish this like that. So it yeah. is pretty famous. So it's just like. It's true. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. We don't really have anything for like It or The Stand. Um, I'm mm-hmm. trying to think of some of the big ones because that's generally going to be the ones where you yeah. have like famous stories. Um, wasn't there something with it? I thought there was. Um, no, there's been, I mean, he's obviously talked a lot about it since it came out. Yeah. Um, you know, he's, he's obviously talked about like that damn clown will outlive me and stuff like that. Um, but I don't know if there's any stories around it, but, um, yeah, that's certainly, uh, that is an interesting. Those three are the ones that instantly come to my mind is Tabitha saving Carrie. Yeah. Is, is probably that I, I I'm with you. I think that or the Stanley. It isn't necessarily as closely book related, but I think another one that gets talked about a lot is the woman that he ran into at the store. Mm-hmm. It's like you're Stephen King, the older lady. He's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I hate you, what you write. You write these terrible things, and she had Green Mile yeah. in her hand, and she's like, you know, you should write more books like this, like good books. And he's like, I did write that. No, you didn't. And she walks away. Yeah, <laughs> like it, that's one I've heard told multiple times. And I just love it. Um, but that isn't necessarily. I, I, that's only like tangential to like um whatever. But yeah, there's some of the famous. That's what we should talk about at some there's point. There's the one. Is, is, there's the one gather where up, gather up yeah. King. Like, what are the famous King stories? But. I know there's one where he's on a plane and someone's reading one of his books and it looks like brand new, so it's like their first time reading it. There's that story. I don't remember how it ends, oh, but I remember no, that one. Oh, no, there's one that just all happened in the last couple of years because we covered it, and it was, um, God, I can't remember. It was something on a plane, and then the the lady said something, 
that she had heard negative things or something, yeah. and, but didn't realize it was him. Yeah. And then they published yeah. this thing about it, and then like the daughter found like somehow connected that her mom was that lady and yeah. it, like it turned into this whole full circle thing yeah um yeah definitely kind of cool also cody has some good emojis there no a, f- a few messages ago no yeah P- no. pig blood fire skull <laughs> <laughs> i do love those though like emojis and then like do a story and see if people can guess what it is based do off the, the do the movie one is really fun there's a movie guessing game like that where you do an emoji for a movie so you do like uh, a lion and then a crown yeah, 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 th- exactly. Yeah. So that that Cody, that's a great one for uh, Carrie. I think we've done it before on our social media, where we've done that for Stephen King, uh, and it is it is very interesting. Um, which ones you can come up with for sure? That's an interesting thought. David says, even though the ending is moderately happy, I kind of always thought the Institute is way darker than Pet Cemetery. I mean, we talked about it when it came out because yeah. we we ended up covering it uh, what a month or so after it came out. Yeah. Um. It is pretty bleak, man. It's very like, dark. They murder his parents. Um, I mean, like right off the bat, like, like that's the first scene in the book. Yeah, it's one of the f- earliest scenes cap, for cap. sure. Yeah, and I remember. Yeah, just thinking it was pretty. It was pretty bleak for sure. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I would. I don't know if I could agree with it being bleaker than Pet Cemetery though. That one's pretty bad, man. Pet Cemetery having the death of a child is just like. I mean, I know that. And, and I know, know that there's some in the institute that that go missing. And, yeah, and we're like but hinted you know, at that they're dead. You know the one that the scene that sticks with me for pet cemetery though is when he's digging his kid up Oof. that scene is just that's sneaking into a cemetery and digging up your four-year-old yeah Ugh. yeah that's i don't know why but there's some elements of that that whole like section mm-hmm. there that just th- that's what comes to me immediately when i think of that because it's just yeah you know it's racing all the shit's racing through his mind he knows like i shouldn't do this this is wrong and did like, i hear someone yeah did it, i hear him yeah, exactly. I hear him calling for me. Yeah, like all that different stuff. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, I don't know, but yeah, the institute is we we covered that when we talked yeah. about it though. Like I remember being absolutely stunned as that book started out with both yeah. of his parents getting killed, and then they basically convey it to him that his parents are still alive, right? They while he's, yeah, they while he's there. It, they're like, yeah, you're gonna go back to them, you know, kind of thing. Yeah, so that's like a whole. Like, they want they don't want the subjects to find out. That's one thing I remember yeah. being so dark. If the, su- if the subjects find out that their parents are dead and everyone's dead, then they become hopeless and they stop eating or they attempt escapes or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Or revenge, they get mad and start attacking. Yeah, I mean, those are kids you wouldn't necessarily want to Mm-mm. to to displease. Yeah, don't mess with kids like Carrie. <laughs> Uh, and then um, going back here, uh, Margaret, uh, she recaps the basics of the story and then asks uh, what intrigues her about it. And she says it manages to dip into the collective unconscious uh, of of, the, of their own age and society. She points out that female figures with powers uh, seem to pop up whenever women struggle for women's rights comes to the fore and cites some examples of that. Uh, and then also mentions the fact that, you know, in the mid 70s, that was kind of a, a big portion a big time for you know feminism as it was coming out of like the 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 more repressive era of the 50s and 60s um so it kind of goes along the lines of that she then gets into some deeper analysis of the text that i'm going to leave for everyone else to read on their own either from the link in the show notes or from the new carry edition um it gets a little bit too uh too deep i think to just cover it at a, yeah. whatever and it was also her words to it there's a part of it when it's her writing it that just felt a little bit more like maybe people want to read the whole thing themselves she then said that king is a visceral writer and a master of granular detail she quotes uh marina moore who said that the literary the the literary ideal is imaginary gardens with real toads in them and then she says that uh boy does king write uh writing have toads in them <laughs> he does write bad people very well yeah mrs carmen do yeah oh yeah <laughs> I mean, there's some people in Carrie that are just downright horrible, too. I mean, oh, yeah. You got the main bully. Chris. Bill, Chris. Chris. Billy yeah. was stuck in my head, but that's her boyfriend's name, isn't it? Yeah, I yeah, think so. It's, and, it's been a minute. And then Carrie's mom. Jeez. Yeah. Good Lord. Yeah. That's what I was just thinking, man. That's why I want to rewatch that newer version, man, with Julianne Moore playing that role. Yeah. Like She is great yeah I, I love julianne more though so yeah she's a she's a national treasure yeah uh she closes out by uh saying that underneath the horror um in quotes is always real horror in this case the all too uh actual uh poverty and neglect uh and hunger uh and abuse that exists in america today she quotes uh king from on writing where he says quote i went to school with uh kids who wore the same uh neck dirt for months kids whose skin festered with sores and rashes kids uh with eerie dried apple uh apple doll faces 
cases that resulted from untreated burns, kids who were sent to school with stones in their dinner buckets and nothing but air in their thermoses. Uh, and then she goes on to say uh, that for King, like Dickens, the ultimate horror is when human when there is human cruelty involved, and especially when it's aimed at children. Uh, and then uh, the last bit, she says, I think this is part of the King's widespread appeal. Yes, he shows us weird stuff, but in the context of the actual, uh, the clock, the sofa, the religious paintings on the wall, all the daily objects that Carrie explodes during her rampage. These are drawn from life, uh, as is the uh, everyday sadism of high school that, uh, of the high school kids uh, that make Carrie feel like a, as frighteningly relevant as ever. Which, yeah, and that's why I'm like, th- I remember that thinking that in 22. 20- 12 or 13 when 13 when that movie came out yeah. was it was like oh i wonder if this movie's gonna like hold up or whatever uh and then when i was watching i'm like oh my god like this is <laughs> yeah. as relevant today as it was in 75 i mean bullies bullying is still a thing so. exactly so um yeah so it, it definitely does still uh still hold and I, you know what i think is interesting too is i don't think that carrie ever makes the the cut in the first cut for like king's things that people mention mm-hmm. like when people talk king they're going to say it. They're going to say The Shining. Like, sometimes Carrie gets mentioned, but I don't mm-hmm. think it's in that. I, I think if you're, like, have, like, a, a, a tiered system of his uh, writings, I think Carrie belongs in the top layer, but I don't know that it gets there. I think it's, like, the it's top the, level uh, of, the, of the second layer. Underappreciated work. Yeah, I think it is underappreciated because I really do think it is one of his more – I think it is one of his most iconic. I really do. Mm-hmm. So, some, you know, some part of that is owed to the movie, I do believe, the 1976 movie. Uh, that, that you know, because there's that just captured into the imagination of a lot of people in 1976. Um, uh, but I think that it is right up there. But I just think that it's kind of one of those things where the iconic nature of these other stories almost mm-hmm. bully it out of the picture a little bit. Yeah, and it doesn't deserve. It deserves to be in the first breath of Stephen King, in my opinion, because it was his first. But also, again, it's still one of his most relevant. It's like Misery. Mm-hmm. Misery came out what. 40, 30 something years, 35 something years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it's as relevant today, if not more relevant today than it was when he wrote it. Yeah, you, you know? got those crazy fans that do crazy stuff with celebrities and stuff like that. It's the same thing with like, I mean, that's why it is such a, a generational tell. It works. Yeah. It's kids growing up, a coming of age story. You can tell that in any generation. You just got to make minor changes. Yeah. Okay. Instead of the 50s where there's, you know, the the korean war and stuff like that all right it's the 70s vietnam oh let's bump it up to the 80s we got technology now we got arcades to go to and stuff like that let's incorporate that it's one of those things that like i didn't even think about it when we went to the it escape room in vegas back in october honestly i listened to the audiobook more recently than watching the movies before that yeah and so when i was going down i was thinking 50s 80s as adults and when we got there, I'm like, oh, right, this is going to be the movie. So it's 80s and then 2010s Yeah, with the adults. Yeah. And I, I just remember walking in and being like, this is like, this feels exactly like the 80s. Yeah. And it's one of the things that the story still worked. Yeah. King has those stories. The stand works. Yeah. I mean, even though the the, the, the miniseries was Honestly, not is there, great. Is there any of his but, stuff that really doesn't lend itself to any time period i think his i think most yeah. of his writing is pretty universal um, which is unique when yeah. you look at it because like i uh, my favorite dean coon's book is uh, watchers and i've talked about it several times it doesn't work as well because it's a soviet espionage job part yeah. of it for for that gets the the story going so that doesn't yeah. really work i mean yeah you could shift it to north korea or china or yeah or someone but else if, you know, if, russia if, russia now if red know. dawn taught us anything it's it's they, it's interchangeable. Just swap out the good guy, but it doesn't the, work. The bad guy, no, it doesn't work. Well, who was it? Was it, it North, was North Korea? Korea. <laughs> yeah, North Korea oh, invaded America. Come on, uh, yeah. Maybe that's just our American pride being like, really? You know, I mean, like Russia back in the eighties. Okay. You know, one of my favorite things is you know the uh, Bond um, in the early six in the early to mid sixties uh, avoided ever using the Soviet Union, um, and that's why you saw things like Spectre and some of these things invented. Yeah. You know why? That was. Have you ever heard the story? So they could have the movies released in Russia? No. Oh. It's because they were worried that the Cold War 
was going to be a fleeting and short thing, and that it would date their movies if they made the oh, Soviet Union the and enemy. They were right. I mean, kind of, but the so- the Cold War ended up going on for decades. Yeah. So it's like they easily could have done the Soviet Union, and it, and it, honestly, let's let's not be like let's not pretend like fool ourselves that the so the the Cold War is still so like in the pop culture sense, right? Like look at like uh, Top Gun and some of these other things. Like I just feel like you just kind of like uh, we're also familiar with it because it was in movies for decades. Yeah. But it's just one of my, those funny things but i think with king i don't think he ever really gets super mired in like su- being super timely mm-hmm. you know like i don't know i just think that's why a lot but i do think some of his stories are a little bit more universal and i do think carrie is one of his most universal because oh, yeah, i could, mean you could tell the story of a girl getting bullied and finding out that she has telekinesis powers anytime yeah i mean, I I, mean that could take place back in 1648 yeah, but I would also say like I mean they the would just accuse her of being a witch instantly if she thought of, <laughs> had a free thought. But, but good luck on them if they tried to. Burn yeah, her at imagine the stake. what happens if they try to burn her at the stake. But yeah. I would say that like in the in like the more like in the last you know whatever, and I don't think the 2013 version went into this, but it's like with like the the school shooting stuff. It's like Carrie yeah. could be kind of a like a a, a a stand in for that a little bit even like she is you know I mean, sc- yeah. school violence based on mm-hmm. bullying like that's the the classic trope that we're told you know even though it isn't true in a lot of school shooting cases but we hear it all the time where it's, oh this kid was bullied pushed to the brink and yeah. they you know got dad's gun and went to school like and it's just like carrie kind of can, so the, so the can, funny the, thing is is that i found out in in uh you gave me a book to read about columbine and i did a little bit more into mass shootings and school shootings and stuff like that the thing i found out with that research is that the majority of the kids who are bullied who bring a gun to school you know bring their dad's gun to school they don't ever end up actually using it it's there as a deterrent mostly yeah like there was one here in utah uh, a few years back where the kid was caught he was in elementary school brought an unloaded gun just because he didn't want the bully to pick on him anymore yeah and that's that's and that's so sad yeah and it's not to say that some bully kids don't no, it does but, but i would say that i think most of us assume everything that with every shooting and it's proved to not really be the case all that no. but i'm just saying though that yeah like carrie it works you know almost as well today you know with in but just in different ways potentially yeah. but yeah i don't know I, I i love it and you know happy birthday to carrie um and i 50 th- years and, holy cow and that does mean that over the next couple of years we've got a lot of 50 year anniversaries coming it i mean it's well a that's a ways away a few years away yeah that was 86 so that's yeah. that's into like the second uh wave of cujo uh, but like salem's oh, lot shining. salem's lot and the shining are going to be up next right there like, yeah so um yeah we might have more on that in a bit so um and speaking of um uh i don't want to i almost said kathy bates but not kathy bates but this one um and also uh, sorry did i uh chat as well uh david says my favorite uh was lightning uh i can't read with that stupid emoji thing my way. Do you, is it on yours too yes uh, what the hell do they do that Hang on. um now back to king sorry i had to there you go <laughs> yeah, yeah, there we go yeah i don't know why and you know what's funny is i'm highlighting this emoji thing and it's empty for me now is it really but it's still blocking the damn chat i can still do this <laughs> really oh, okay on mine it's empty probably because i'm the host but it's like cool then if it's empty then don't show it on my screen uh and then uh jack says kathy bates is carrie's mom but uh doing her performance uh from the water boy <laughs> I forgot Kathy Bates was a yeah. boy. I haven't seen that movie since I was probably in junior high. Um, and then uh, Cody says, I thought uh, Chloe uh, uh, Moritz was pretty good. And I agree. I thought she was great. Yeah. I do think that overall the movie failed to live up to the, the mm-hmm. original. But if I could like pick and choose things, I would probably just take Julianne Moore from the new one, put her in the original, and that would be like the perfect character yeah. to me. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but this next one here, Netflix fans go wild over a chilling new thriller that is being likened to Stephen King's misery, but it's actually based on a sinister true story. Oh, boy. This is by uh, Nova uh, Bajamonti from the Daily Mail on April 4th, 2024. Um Let's see. Uh, So Netflix uh, fans are eagerly awaiting the new release of a chilling new series that's been likened to King's Misery, but it is based on a true story. The new psychological thriller is titled Baby Reindeer, follows a uh, struggling comedian Don Dunn, uh, played by Richard Gadd, and his uh, delicate relationship with a crazed fan named Martha, played by Jessica Gunning. Uh, Their friendship begins to break down, uh, but Martha attempts to tighten her uh, grip with devastating consequences. Uh, in an interesting twist, Gad is actually the heart of the true story that it's based on. So, all right, 
<laughs> That's something else. Uh, so, uh, and the story retells a story of his obsessive stalker who chased him for years and b- bombarded him with over 41,000 messages and voicemails. Good Lord. <laughs> Uh, it is a seven part series that will show the terrifying lengths that crazy fans will go to get closer to their obsession. Uh, it is already being hailed for its similarities to misery, but it will be, uh, but it will take on a more modern style as she uses technology to stalk and constrain her victim. So I don't know if I like that word constrained. Yeah. <laughs> Gad said that he initially turned this horrifying event into a one man show, but eventually decided to adapt it for screen. He continues, quote, stalking on television tends to be very sexed up. Uh, it has a mystique. It's somebody in a dark al- uh, in a dark alleyway. It's somebody who's really sexy, who's very normal. But then they go strange bit by bit. But stalking is a mental illness. Uh, I really want to show the layers of stalking with a human quality uh, I haven't seen on television before. Uh, it's a stalker story turned on its head. It's like uh, a trope uh, and it turns on its head. And he says, I think it's quite interesting when you don't know uh, who you're on the side of. I want it to be layered and I want it to capture the human experience. So, you know, what's funny is not that long ago we had a discussion about misery is basically a perfect movie as is. Mm -hmm. But there was part of us that's like it would be really interesting still to see it readapted modernized in the yeah. modern day with like social media and Cell just phones just and, all yeah. this stuff and like honestly it looks like it turns out we don't need a, a readaptation of misery let's just tell it with a different <laughs> character because <laughs> it sounds like this is this gonna, happened in real life yeah this is a, tr- a true story um yeah. the guy playing the, the the victim is was truly a victim in real life um yeah and it releases on netflix on april 11th so that is a few short days away uh that is thursday right. that is thursday so uh, very interesting though. I, I I remember seeing that. And I remember just thinking to myself, dude. I feel like it wasn't even a year ago we were talking about. Yeah, it was you, just last year we talked about it. It's like you don't want to step on the toes of one of the greater Stephen King movies, but it's like it just feels like in today's day and age, it's so yeah. fucking relevant. Like pe- yeah. this shit's happening now with like influencers. I mean, with normal celebrities. I mean, nowadays with like you've got you know I mean you've got these people tracking you know people like through uh, like the paparazzi but mm-hmm. it's like real time now you know like paparazzi are tweeting so it's like oh i know they're at this restaurant right yeah. now and like it's not like it was in the old days where you know if there was paparazzi it's gonna get posted in the paper a day or so oh later. that's gonna be in the paper tomorrow morning damn it yeah it's like oh that well they were at that restaurant last night like you can't do anything with yeah. that so i just remember having that conversation and it's like cool this is like the best of both worlds because we're going to get kind of a view of this uh, of a story very similar to misery but now you don't have to really step on the toes of again because i think you're going to put yourself in a shitty situation because it's like how do you compete like no matter what if you come out with misery even if even though you have nothing to do with the original movie you just go hey i'm taking the book and i'm going to do my own uh, version of this yeah i love the original whatever still you're going to be compared to the original of course you are um and kathy bates how do you beat her (laughs) recast her (laughs) do kathy bates again (laughs) <laughs> just every 20 years they just get hey, kathy we're gonna do misery again come on cool <laughs> here's my paycheck <laughs> you know kind of thing yeah oh why man. not i mean it, it, it could work it well because could... i mean let's let's be honest it'd be interesting to see the dynamic on if uh uh if she was a uh, oh shit i just based on her name not kathy bates but the character uh annie wilkes annie walks if annie difference. wilkes was a little bit older yeah, exactly. It could work. It yeah, could, it could easily it could still, work. It could still be, you know, because there's the the struggle of a, a crippled man versus a, an older woman. Yeah. Instead of just, a you know, a, a, a middle-aged woman kind we of could, thing. We could always remember uh, End of Days when a little old lady beat up Arnold. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's still one of my favorite things, dude. It's so funny. I um, mean, she was a demon, but... <laughs> We'll leave that and out. And then he ends up like pile driving her through a table, yeah. doesn't he? Like a glass table. Um, so yeah, uh, Netflix, April 11th. Check it out, Baby Reindeer. Uh, I don't know if I've heard anything about this, but after this covering this article, I am very intrigued to watch this. Um, next up, we've got, uh, speaking of Peter's favorite, Mrs. Carmody. Uh, this is just a this is just a short little one, and it's titled "The The Real Grocery Store Trip That Inspired Stephen King's The Mist," and this is by uh, Depapriya Dutta from Slash Film on March tenth, twenty twenty four, and then uh, she talks about how in the notes section of Skeleton Crew, King talks about how the idea came to him for The Mist. He says he was writing it in the summer of nineteen seventy six, so we're only a couple years away from that fifty year anniversary. Yep, I know it wasn't published then, but still. Yeah. And he could not think of any ideas uh, as his agent was compiling stories for a collection. He says it, he it felt like the short story machine in his head was broken, and he didn't know if it was permanent or temporary. Oh, <laughs> temporary! Yeah, you thank God. You, 
God. You would hope because, like, yeah, can you imagine like that's your livelihood and suddenly yeah. like just can't think of any ideas like that would be brutal. Uh, then the thunderstorm hit and he decided he needed to go to the store where he was inspired. And then we got a quote from King. He says, uh, quote, I was halfway down the middle aisle looking uh, looking for hot dog buns when I imagined a big prehistoric bird flapping its uh, way toward the meat counter at the back, knocking over cans of pineapple chunks and bottles of tomato sauce. By the time uh, my son Joe and I were in the checkout lane, I was amusing myself with stories about how all these people are trapped in the supermarket surrounded by prehistoric animals. So that <laughs> it's, right. it's funny to me because it's like when you watch or read The Mist, I don't know if the like pterodactyl things are like the first thing that come to mind for me. Mm-mm. And I never would have guessed that that was like the first thing that came to him. That almost feels like the kind of an evolution of like, first there's a mist, first there's things in there and then there's the ter- like, but no, yeah. it turns out like, and it sounds like the original idea was like prehistoric animal. Like, like they were all, dinosaurs. They were all yeah. dinosaurs. So it's like, oh man. That, and then he got it. And then he put his king touch on it and, and, and it became monsters. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, uh, and then, uh, then he was amused, um, but then he decided to write it. Uh, and that day, he wrote a chunk of the mist, and then finished the entire thing within within a week. Jeez. So, uh, it, just short, but it's really cool because, like, I don't know if I've ever heard that that story before. Um, and uh, yeah, it's uh, interesting. I wonder if that said grocery store still exists or not. It'd be interesting to find <laughs> out. Uh, all right. So next one, we got the last. Uh, news article before we get into like odds and ends and stuff and it is our boy billy billy skarsgård oh yeah uh bill skarsgård um quote really really disturbing pennywise scene that the studios had removed from it oh boy i don't know if i've heard this one either so i I feel like i had to cover it but okay um i will say it is not pleasant (laughs) um let's see it can't be worse than the girl under the bleachers Uh oh you don't you don't think so oh boy (laughs) Uh, so uh, this is from uh, Sh- Sharanaya from Fandom Wire on March 15, 2024. Um, and she starts off by saying, it seems uh, from his choice in roles that Bill has an affinity for grim roles. And I would say think that would be safe to say. Uh, he is also receiving a lot of well-deserved praise for his commitment to his roles. But even Bill admits that one scene was too much for him in the movie It. Uh, the film has uh, plenty of grisly things, but there was one that was too much for Bill to stomach and has ultimately ended up being cut from the film. Speaking to Playback Podcast, the Crow Star revealed that a particular segment was so, uh, uh, which was to explore Pennywise's origins, dealt with the abominable cl- clown grabbing a baby from her mother and eating her. Oh! This scene made everyone's stomach churn to an extent that it was ultimately deleted from the film. Uh, recalling the experience, a Swedish actor said that turned out really, really disturbing. Jeez. <laughs> just, yeah, like I said, the, the bleacher girl, like, that's yeah. that's bad, but like <laughs> a baby. Yeah, that's that's brutal, man. From her mother's arms. Oh, yeah, that's that is I can imagine that would be uh interesting uh and then this is actually interesting as well when the producers were shown this clip they uh it expectedly drew an adverse reaction from everyone considering the gruesome scene involved the horror uh, involved horror inflicted on a child the video clip though did manage to get leaked online and traumatize many netizens before being permanently deleted which is impossible there's no such thing as permanently deleting it which makes me think there may be something out there on the internet somewhere <laughs> tad's gonna go find it Oh, that's a new one, though. I mean, I, I feel yeah. like we've heard a lot of stories about this stuff over the years, so it's very interesting when something new um, crops up. I mean, I know it's not the oldest story, but like, yeah. it's not like a movie from the 80s or anything. It's 2017, but still crazy. Um, that's awesome. Let's see. Uh, Jack says, I was listening to Skeleton Crew recently, and I think Kathy Bates works uh, uh, be, or would be a good grandmother uh, from that story where she wants uh, to hug her grandson. I forget the name. Uh, I, I try to oh. remember... I don't know if I've read Skeleton Crew. I'm trying to remember. That's the one that I have. I just bought not too long ago. I haven't really got into it too far. Uh, of course, Star Wars is coming up now. Um, Stephen King. Is that the one that I just... Uh, let's see. Um, let's see if I can find... Yeah, Wikipedia. Let's just see what it says. Oh, yeah. That's the one that has the monkey in it. Uh, the jaunt. Yeah, I've read this one. Oh, so I have read that one. Uh, oh, Grandma is probably the name of it. Uh, Gra- Grandma. Uh, G-R-A-M-M-A is probably the one that he's thinking of. Um, I always get all the, some of the short story ones confused. The titles just don't stick with me well yeah. enough. So I have to look it up and see like what stories are in there. Then it's like, oh yes, I remember that one. Um, it's uh, Night Shift is the one that I just got not too long ago on Kindle. Ah, okay. So um, yeah. And then, yeah, because uh, that's the one that doesn't exist in audiobook. 
right? Yes, true, true. So I got it on Kindle. Yeah. Uh, and then David uh, was talking about, uh, I think maybe Carrie. I think I saw the original one, but uh, I know I don't need or, but I know I do not need to see this new or the new one. Maybe he's talking about the uh, the misery, which actually it's not misery. It's a it's a completely different thing, but it's very misery esque. Um, and then uh, Jax is horrific, but on the other hand, I want my baby back, baby back, baby back ribs. <laughs> Why are we laughing? That's not, oh, that's not, oh, that's dark. Gallows humor. That's, yeah. it's, it's what it is. Uh, so first uh, in the odds and ends section here, the first one, um, Amazon uh, apparently strikes a deal to exclusively stream under the dome. Great. So I don't like to take punch, pull punches at things or you know, take shots at things. But yeah. let's just say in this circumstance, do you think Amazon was the lowest bidder? So they got the rights to under the dome. <laughs> Everyone has to put in <laughs> whoever pays the most like a, doesn't like want a, it. It's like a government contract. It's, no, it's it's like the reverse. It's like, well, I don't want it. Well, I don't want. It. I don't want. It. Well, I'm gonna go ten million dollars. Say I don't want it. Well, I'll go eight million, and it just keeps going to the one that's like Amazon's. Like, oh, we'll put up ten ten thousand. They're like, all right, you got it. <laughs> you know, it's like it's like yeah. a reverse bidding war. <laughs> Sorry, I hate that. I, I think I hate of like that. I think of like a uh, Hitchcock and Scully from Brooklyn Nine Nine, where it's like, I'll give you ten dollars, seven. Aren't you supposed to go up? Fine, I'll do it for two. Wait, what's happening? All right, I'll do it for free. That's it. that's what I think of right here with Under the Dome. Is they're just like, we'll give it. We'll, we'll let you have Under the Dome for for ten thousand dollars. Oh, that seems a little bit high. All right, eight. Uh, no. Five. Yeah, <laughs> and then finally, just, they just give it away, and it's like universally panned too. I don't know if yeah. I've even seen a lot of people that have enjoyed it. It's it went off the rails pretty hard, which is unfortunate. You know, in fact, this one's so bad, I really think it's affected the book for some people. Me, there's some people I, I've talked, I've seen where they just like talk about the book in a way, and I'm like, are you really thinking about the book, or is the mo- the show yeah. polluted you? Because the book is really not that bad. I I seriously, when I was working for the post office and able to listen to books all the time, I seriously uh, downloaded it, listened to. The wood, ch- the woodchuck, yeah, scene and everything, um, the plane, and then I went, nope, nope, really, nope. So, I, I, I opted out. So you know, I've never done the audiobook for that. Oh, I, really? I read it in hardcover. Yeah, and I couldn't put it down. I read it like, like, I loved it when it. I read it back in what was that like 2010 when it came out or yeah. something like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy the audiobook at some point and dive in because it's been a long time now. So no, it wasn't. It's even got a good. Uh, uh, narrator too i can't remember who it was was it will it wasn't will Patton. it was not i love that man but it wasn't him <laughs> i swear uh next one and this one's just for you sir uh-oh uh firestarter the 2021 uh, firestarter uh, has hit netflix's top 10 and it uh, reached as high it reached as high as number five uh, so it's finding an audience, um, maybe a little bit late and maybe uh, for free, but or well, not free, but uh, definitely not getting box office returns for it. Um, but yeah, apparently uh, people are finding Firestarter. I don't know if this is, uh, um, what's his name? Uh, Zac, Zac Efron. Efron. Maybe it's a Zac Efron effect. Um, but well, Netflix also pushes Zac Efron because he's in a bunch of Netflix original stuff. So yeah, he also just did the wrestling movie not too long ago. Was that so. with Netflix? No, but I just he's yeah. he's he, he's definitely a, a big actor. So I just wonder if people are finding him uh, just because of him finding the movie yeah. because of him. Um, but it did make me think of you, sir, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the wasted so much good. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, um, King is one of the narrators for Stephen Graham uh, Jones's book, The Angels of Indian Lake, uh, which is coming, I believe, coming out fairly soon. It didn't really give me a date. That's on it. a sinister cover. Yeah, it actually is kind of beastie. I didn't realize. It yeah, just now, but like uh, claws ripping it. I'll like, have to mm. I have to look it up, but uh, I have to look up what the story is about. It just mentioned that the thing I got was just mentioning that King was one of the narrators on there. So. Uh, yeah, that's kind of interesting. Uh, of course, King does a lot of reviews and stuff, but actually reading full on books that aren't his. I don't know if that's one that I've heard uh, a whole lot of before. So, uh, next up, and this is a fun one, uh, Sideshow, uh, Sideshow Collectibles, uh, is releasing a new Tim Curry Pennywise one six scale figure. Uh, they another do, one. They do uh, high, pretty high level stuff. 
Uh, theirs are a little bit. No, this is not. No, they have not done one before. Uh, so oh. generally, the way I would look at it is, I think like the one I've got up above me uh, on the screen here, I believe is maybe Nika, um, which does more action figure type stuff. Sideshows, generally speaking, is more like statue level stuff. Like honestly, even if you look at some of these pictures on the or the couple of the pictures I have on the screen, those are pretty. They look pretty good. <laughs> like I thought the one on the left was a picture from the show. Yeah, exactly. That's where it's just like they're they're yeah. they're really good. Uh, and I grabbed the pictures I did because it shows you could swap his head out to different uh, heads as well as the hands if you want to get the uh, monstrous hands and stuff. Uh, pretty cool. Um, but um, guard your wallet if you are looking into such things because sideshow is generally not a cheap um, product. Unfortunately, well, you get what you pay for. That looks yeah, good. It, great. Yeah, for for sure, for sure. Uh, and then next up, uh, the Stanley Hotel is going to be celebrating the 50-year anniversary of King staying at the hotel, um, which would obviously inspire That's The Shining. Year. That's this year. That is January 30th, 2024. So, uh, or what, did I Sep- say that right? September 30th, Not 2024? January 30th. Oh, yeah. <laughs> September 30th, 2024. I was like, I, I didn't like hear myself, but like as suddenly after I said, I'm like, that didn't feel right. I don't think Run I. That back. I don't think I said the right thing there. Yes, September thirtieth, twenty twenty four. After further review, we found that <laughs> Tad was offsides. <laughs> Seriously, um, which is interesting because again, we're talking right now about yesterday being the fifty year anniversary of Carrie. Yeah. So a few short months away is the fifty yeah. year anniversary of him staying at that hotel at the end to of the season and being like, "This is one of weird. his most iconic works." Yeah. Yeah, and that's one of his biggest stories too is mm-hmm. the, the the stay at the stanley uh and inspiring you know staying in room 217 and being inspired to write the shining so they're going to make a big uh event out of this um it, 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 right now they're not really i don't even know if they have anyone signed yet but they do say that guests will be announced throughout the summer so it sounds oh, wow. like this is going to be a big to do so um could be fun <laughs> it'd be a lot of fun um yeah and so, that's just next door in colorado yeah indeed indeed uh, not not few, a bit. Ba- few hour drive away. Pretty nice hotel, from what I understand. Too. I'm not I'm staying there. <laughs> <laughs> not doing it. Uh, next up. Um, so last episode, uh, last roundtable uh, in the Uncle CB recommends. We talked about a tweet where he tweeted about the Apple Show constellation. Um, well, it turns out star Numi uh, Rapace was asked about it recently, and she's and this, so this is kind of a follow up to an Uncle Stevie recommends. She is uh, the star of Constellation, and she was uh, asked about it, and she said, "I mean, he's a legend, uh, icon. Um, thank you first uh, for that interaction." Uh, Peter uh, Harness sent it to me uh, and sent a screenshot, and I thought I read it wrong at first. I was like, "Wait, what? Stephen King? Like that's or the Stephen King?" And then she then she laughs. Um, so this is a big moment, uh, and I'm very curious to see what he thinks now that it's all out. Last episode uh, is coming out Wednesday, so I'm uh, curious to hear if he if he feels that it lands. And then she chuckles. So kind of cool. I mean, nice. I mean, we've talked about it over the years with different horror people and stuff, where yeah. it's just to get like the thumbs up from King has got to be like what and. And I don't even know that this is even a horror. So it's like, I think yeah. even if you're just, I mean, I feel if you're a living, breathing human being that's existed in the last 50 years, you know who Stephen King is. He's such a a, a mountain in the pop cultural landscape that yeah. it's like, even if you're not doing a horror thing to hear King, but I love that show got, that you were in. You got like, Steven Spielberg and Stephen King right up there with movies and books. So. Yeah, I mean, it, seriously. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and that does lead us to. Uh, Uncle Stevie recommends. Um, let me go ahead and, uh, yeah. Sorry, I got to get the picture thing because I got two pictures. Uh, because so, I cycle on this one because I have two Uncle Stevie recommends. The first one he talks about is Late Night with the Devil. Uh, and he's uh, and this is his tweet. He says Late Night with the Devil. I got a screener, which again. If you're a horror person, you just yep. send shit to Stephen King. Uh, he says, it's absolutely brilliant. I couldn't take my eyes off it. Your results may vary, as they say, but I urge you to watch it when you can. And I certainly want to watch it. But We're apparently, going with Hayden, right? Apparently, I, the, when I saw, like, oh, it's it's now out, I went and looked, and I couldn't find anywhere. I think it's doing, like, a limited release where it's, like, moving around the country, and then uh. maybe it'll get a wide release, I'm hoping. Because um, I really want to see it. Last I saw, it was, like, massive high ratings, like 100% ratings and stuff. Yeah. So. Um, it's pretty well regarded, so I can't wait to see it for sure. Uh, and then next up, uh, the next one, he says, um, 
uh, you mentioned Spielberg, which is funny. Hey. He, he says, I love The Night Swim, and it's currently on Amazon Prime. He says, uh, it's uh, a lot. It's like a lost, low-budget Steven Spielberg film from Spielberg's early period, say after Duel but before Jaws. Simple story, but the cat on the diving board and those creepy bunny slippers. Oh, boy. I need to watch that. I actually really wanted to see that in theaters. You wanted to see Yeah, it, we missed so, it. Yeah. Um, so that, that's uh, pretty cool for uh, Uncle Stevie Recommends. Nice. Um, so that brings us over to the palaver section. Okay. Um, so uh, I also uh, just realized for some reason, maybe it's because it was building it on here, um, that n- with where we're at here on the yeah, screen. I'm the good guy. You're the bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, again. I have the gun. You have some tarot card. <laughs> Sounds about right. Oh. You're hooded. I'm wearing a hat. <laughs> Well, we don't know if you're wearing a hat. Just, <laughs> that's what we should do is get a picture of this where it's no hat. and just alternates back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> but don't do it like just, just back and forth, one, 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 one. Do like three and then one and then two and then four. Just like it, it's completely random, just like King with the hat. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Um, all right. So, yeah, uh, the main thing I wanted to talk about here is March Insanity. Uh, I did do a short video kind of talking about the finals. Uh, so let me go ahead and throw it up on screen real quick, and I'll uh, so, uh, pull us back up on screen in a minute. I didn't look. I didn't watch the video. I waited for the episode, so I don't know who won. Oh, really? Yeah. Any guesses? You're you're blocking the screen with your hand there. Um, I think Charlie Tree won. All right, that's I a think good. I do. That's a good guess because it did indeed win. Yeah. Uh, and I met, I covered it on the the short video. Uh, I don't necessarily I haven't been good with record keeping for like percentages or anything. Uh, I do remember Oi losing to Eddie by one vote, but beyond yeah. that, like I don't know. But I think they say actually you were really good with percentages last year. You broke down each. Yeah, and I, I usually do, but I haven't really kept track of them. And then like yeah. some of the I, I'd have to probably go back through like all the old episodes to find mm-hmm. it and like r- like get the the, the data up, you know recorded. But I think this might be the most decisive victory. <laughs> in the history of the finals especially, especially in the final in the finals yeah. yeah there's been some more decisive victories in l- earlier rounds um but this one um it was very decisive if i remember right it was 86 percent charity tree <laughs> so yeah it, i mean uh, and again i uh, i got to give a lot of credit to um, the eddie one here because it basically went upsets um it upset both heavy hitters because remember i put the the heavy hitters on the top in the four corners the, the one seeds yeah um so those are like the most uh, the ones that got the most nominations so those are the ones that are probably the hardest to beat and eddie went through and beat two of the four um and then matched up with the third one and lost the third one but n- th- that one went a long ways yeah. uh and 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 yeah it pulled it's my a lot, boy eddie pulled a lot of upsets there but yeah charlie tree was the uh buzz saw that yeah could not beat so that is the um 2024 uh winner for the uh worst dark tower moment is charlie tree and it was a decisive victory so behind the scenes remember i've mentioned before how on this uh obs there's two different screens yeah and like the one on the the one side is what's Shows actually what's showing next. and the other one's what's next so i recorded this video monday night got home from work recorded a video mm-hmm. went and looked at it and realized it was the wrong slide backer because I was looking at the wrong screen. Oh. So I'd recorded the whole video, and then I had to go re-record it. Uh, there was one oh. bit of trivia that I forgot to mention the second time through. I actually think I ended up talking a little bit more better about it overall in the second video anyway. Okay. But the first video, there was the one thing I wanted to bring back up. When you go look at the entire history of the March Insanity now, we've done four votes. I've got a mm-hmm. tracker here. We've had 2019 Most Hated Gar- Dark Tower Character. Rhea of the Coos. Yep. Uh, 2022, most beloved character, Eddie Dean. Ooh, 2023, best Dark Tower moment, Showdown at the Traveler's Rest. Yep. 2024, worst Dark Tower moment, Charlie Tree. Mm-hmm. What do you see as a pattern there? Bad, good, bad, good. No. No? Three of the four are from book four. Oh. <laughs> Rhea, Showdown at the Traveler's Rest, Charlie Tree. Yeah. Three of the four we've done so far have been Wizard and Glass- centered and eddie's in book four so four I, out of four I, I, and and when i was recording that video which neville's never see the light of day because it was stupid because it had fucking a pointless background to it um i just mentioned that it's like you know that one almost doesn't count because like he's a major character and it's throughout like he's throughout the entire series right so it's like you can't really pin him down to eight books so but Rhea is yeah, only in one book yeah Rhea is a one book character and then the other two are events or moments and both of those mm-hmm. came it's just interesting to me and also as an aside, the finals for that first one 
was Rhea the Coos versus Cordelia Delgado. So book four, <laughs> another book four. So yeah. it's like, my God, man, book four yeah. holds some prestige in general. Like it's it's pulling some some decent stuff for these. Well, polls. I mean, there would be a a, a a different villain that would be in there most hated if you psychopaths would just admit that flag's a bad guy <laughs> and stop trying to pretend like he's the savior or some oh. kind of good guy or something i mean he again stop messing with me and just admit it he's the one that brought nort back to life sir it's rolling that ended him and see flag's bringing people back to life doing the good thing you know so the guy who starts the zombie apocalypse now is a good guy huh <laughs> all hell romero <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but yeah so uh i just thought that was very interesting um and uh yeah i don't know uh this is this was a fun one though um i do think uh, in the future i'm just going to keep it on here like we did this last year we did it on a previous uh, so we did a, a, a poll website last year right just basically set up mm-hmm. the bracket and it did all the work which is kind of nice but there were some things i didn't like about it so i'm not i'm done with them yeah, you had to like fill out something like enter an email or something wasn't it no it was just uh i i said it to where you didn't have to do that yeah but then because that it made you do like a captcha thing yeah for everything you voted mm-hmm. and it was got really fucking irritating um but i think it was the maybe the first year where i did it just on our website kind of like I, we did this year it's a little bit more work for me but ultimately i'm probably going to continue doing that uh unless i really find something i like that will just be super easy and then this one um i remember it you know you could vote anonymously and it was it didn't feel as as hard like it wasn't like making you do freaking captures and bullshit like that yeah. so um yeah just uh I, I i thought this one turned out well though um i i mentioned in the video but i'll mention it again if you have any uh ideas for march insanity i i am collecting ideas i think i've got six or so ideas right now um that you know that i can pick from but you can d- don't let that stop you if you have uh, ideas you can always submit them anytime um but yeah uh let's go ahead and jump on over to the next slide uh which is the announcement that i teased on social media of course it is not an announcement to say march insanity 2025 will be back because it certainly will be i mentioned that already yeah but the thing that is changing is next year there is going to be two brackets two brackets happening you text me about this the other day there is going to be a dark tower bracket as always yep but i am going to start doing a parallel bracket for other stephen king stuff well yeah i mean really you got the ncaa tournament you got the nit tournament so there you go yeah i mean two it, tournaments. it just uh, like ultimately i love the dark tower stuff so i never wanted to like get in a spot where march insanity was not doing dark tower stuff but there is also stuff where it's like man like most hated king character yep. you know not in the dark tower realm like of course, Mrs. Carmody is going to be a hard one to She's beat. She's going to win. <laughs> You're going to you, you'll, you'll. I will make sure she wins. <laughs> make sure. Um, but I mean, there's just a lot of different things. I mean, uh, there's a lot of interesting things. So yeah. I've just I've decided to yeah kick off and do it. So starting 2025, we will have two brackets running side by side. We'll have the Stephen King bracket and the Dark Tower bracket. Um, topics uh, will be like we always do. Um, I do think that um, Peter and I are probably going to put our heads together and th- come up with what we are going to do for the King bracket for the kickoff. Um, just like we did for the the Dark Tower. One. The original that was, that was not fan voted. That was just me and you going. Who do you think it is? Yeah. Because I know it's not flag because you guys are idiots. And, <laughs> and think that, I say that with the most love. Slander. And, and everything. Slander. Slander. Um, yeah. So uh, ultimately. Crazy uh, people. Uh, yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll pick the first one. And then from then on, it will become fan voted. But for the Dark Tower one, um, toward the end of the year around Thanksgiving ish, which is late November, if you're not in the United States, we'll start um, throwing it out there for people to get um, to nominate or to give us their topic ideas. I already have some in hand yeah. as well. I'll take all the nominations, throw all the uh, topic ideas into a list, uh, and then we'll figure out what it is. And then in the year end bash, we'll announce what the topic is for Dark Tower. Uh, and then we'll spend January and February um, getting nominations to what we want to put on the bracket. And then at the end of February, we'll have the bracket set and start voting. And, and, then, March. F- and then for the King bracket for the first year, Peter and I will pick the topic and then future bound. We'll do the same thing with the nominations the same way we're doing the Dark Tower one now. Yeah. We'll let that be a fan decided one for sure. Um, I mean, of course, there is always an idea where uh, you can always just replicate some of the Dark Tower topics as well. Most hated character, most mm-hmm. beloved character, um, best and worst. Oh, best and worst moments you can do. That's way too broad for King. Yeah, but, there um, are so many moments. <laughs> that's, that's too many. Um, besides, you would want to just load that with uh, Mrs. Carmody being shot with the best I mean, moment. <laughs> if the shoe fits, if it quacks like a duck, walks like a duck, 
you know yeah so um yeah that's uh that's uh that's the march insanity update um uh, yeah i'm excited i'm excited to see uh like i said peter and i will come up with something whether it just ends up stealing what we did previously or whether we come up with something i mean of course there's things like king books there's some obvious ideas there um favorite you know i i I don't know there's all kinds of best and worst yeah it'll be it'll be fun i can't i can't wait to see scariest Let's not forget who we're talking about. We are talking about Stephen King. Yeah. We could talk about the scariest moment. Yeah. That actually might be a, <laughs> that might be, that's a, that's a strong contender there. That's one that, uh, I mean, he is the king of horror. Yeah. Unintended, you know, and everything. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so ultimately, uh, that is um, all I really have. I didn't have a whole lot else in the palaver section. Do you got okay. anything palaver wise? I, I do know also, I will, I will throw it out there. I am uh, gathering top or okay. not not topics. I am gathering and scouring the series, building out trivia. For, oh, for the year end bash. For the year end bash. Awesome. So, uh, everyone, be ready for that. I am gonna. I need I, to talk I, to you I, about that because I think I have a way that you can do it live with people online. Oh yeah, yeah. We'll figure that out for Where sure. You don't. But, you don't. It, it it goes off. There's a website out there where it's multiple choice. You give them the question, they join the lobby. So if they're here live, what we do is we type the code in the chat, and they join the lobby, and then you just give them the time. And what it does is it not only gives you points for guessing the right answer, but it gives you points for being the fastest. So it's not like someone wins because they got majority of the questions right. It's also how fast they are. So if you do like 10 questions or 15 questions, you know, uh, Jack and Cody may be neck and neck, but Jack's just a little bit faster, so he beats Cody out, and he's the one that wins and everything. So okay. that's that's a website. Well, uh, my wife recently just did it with a, like a team building thing, and then my daughter uses it at school. Okay, so it's free to use. You just go onto a website. You can do it on your phone, or it's it is recommended you do it on a computer though. But if you're here live in YouTube, we could give the code out, and then people could hmm. join from anywhere in the world. Yeah, I'm uh, not too far in yet, but yeah, I'm finding some stuff. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to bounce everything off you because okay. uh, I want to make sure they're fair because I think the one I'm trying to like balance out is because there's part of me that's just like, I want to get- Wait, s- so I can't play? No, of course not. Why not? Because <laughs> you're, 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 it's like one of those things, like if you're employed by this company- you, Oh, you're you can't, ineligible? Yeah. I, can't, I, can't, I can't win the McDonald's Monopoly it's, if I'm working well, for McDonald's? It turns out you can't, but- <laughs> No, that was the mafia <laughs> that won it. No, no it was the there was like yeah, it was a whole thing. That, yeah, that. Um, but yeah, so uh, I am going to bounce off you because I think the thing for me is I am <laughs> I, I, I'm having to like pull myself back because I'm like finding things where I'm like I'm grabbing some really like probably like in the, the weeds like the tw- like what is it the two thousand dollar Jeopardy questions. Well, see, like, so I, I got to figure make sure I'm like getting a scale that I'm moving up to like two hundred dollar questions and like see but that's a good thing if we do it if we do it with, with uh, Kahoot is what it's called. If you do that, it's still going to be multiple choice, so people can still guess. And if they get it right, they get bonus points for you know how fast they are and everything. So maybe the in the weed stuff isn't necessarily a bad thing, because that's what, that was the thing is like with Kahoot is like it, the idea is not to get to where everyone gets every question right, but it's also how fast you are. So yeah. reading the four answers and and make sure that's the other thing. Make sure you read the question because that always screws me over it's just like which one of these is not a stephen king book and i'm like stephen king it and it's like damn it i misread the question yeah so uh yeah um i uh there's still a lot of work to be done yeah for sure um but I, what the, you know the hardest part was i had to go through everything we've done book club wise and delete all my highlights because i'm just oh, doing yeah, it. i'm yeah, just yeah, doing yeah, yeah. i'm just doing it they don't have like a start over or anything like you told me about that oh my god they don't have a mass delete like which, seriously come on Amazon. which i understand i guess most people probably wouldn't, wouldn't want to mass delete every note that they've ever put yeah. in a book uh, especially um, accidentally yeah exactly but it's like just give me like a two key thing to turn the keys and whatever but now i had to go through <laughs> you have to call me and i have to i have to do it on my computer at the same time <laughs> that two, two person <laughs> turn the authentication key. <laughs> yeah something but yes i am working on that so uh, uh, be ready. Um, I don't know. I, I think the, the the multiple choice thing I'd have to think about because I didn't really consider it from the multiple choice perspective. It's just a so. it's just an interesting option for I mean, you. Ultimately, uh, I do have to look. I don't know if Kahoot has it where you can just because uh, I don't think it's you type out, you set the questions, you hit play, 
and it literally has a timer, and then it calculates the score based off of how fast they answer. So yeah, I don't think that you would have to really do much. You would just hit like next, because then you could even like, if someone doubts an answer or something like that, you could even have like the source material ready and everything like that hmm. with it. But you could also be like really sneaky with it, like which who which character said. Roland, you're a bastard. <laughs> a, Eddie, B, Jake, C, Susanna, D, everyone, <laughs> all of the above. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the the thing that inspired this originally back in the day was we talked about like a Dark Tower Jeopardy, I think. Yeah. So I think I even had a slide somewhere that I had designed to like be yep. like a Jeopardy board type thing. Uh, David, we are talking about year-end bash. Tad's wanting to do a trivia. Been wanting to do it for years yeah, now. Yeah, where but- you in the chat play the trivia and everything and uh is there a price i know that we initially talked about that but we haven't circled back since then yeah i might might have a price we might have a price okay yeah but uh yeah so that that we're we're talking about different ways and different uh methods for having the people online be able to because like one of the things that is like with live chat you could just throw the the answer in the chat everything well that just based off who's the fastest typer so yeah that's, that's part of it too yeah um and we'll figure it out for sure but yeah, yeah. I, I did want to at least throw it out there that i am hard at work going yeah. through the things you know what's tough though too what's that? is skimming and not just reading yeah because it's oh, yeah. like it, uh, dude it draws it pulls you in <laughs> just when i thought i was out they pulled me back in yeah it it, it gets to be a little bit tough to be like no no ted you're not reading just, no, just no. skim keep, keep like going. and there's going. times where it's like you just know like a block of text is and you kind of know what it is it's like okay i know there's no trivia in there so just skip rolling keep. yelling at blame cam i'm gonna read this part <laughs> mm. <laughs> i haven't got that far yet thankfully um but- i did have one thing that happened to me today re- involving stephen king if you want me to talk about that all right go on before we wrap yeah um so one of my favorite chapters in the stand is you know this Oh, um, oh, I'm not in the stand mind frame. Uh, 23 stuck in my head, but that's Flag's introduction. Isn't it 37? Uh, I think it might be, yeah. No Great Loss? Yeah. That's... It's the aftermath of the super flu where there's a bunch of people that died from a different causes. A heroin overdose, a rattlesnake bite, a little boy falls in a well, all that kind of thing. Talk about different people that passed away and everything. And, uh... I'm listening to End of Watch, the third of the Hodges trilogy, mm-hmm. and it's this part where Brady Hartsfield comes out of the coma, and he's talking about and everything like that, and he mentions twice, no great loss, and I'm just like, ha, ah, <laughs> that's I know what that's from. That's yeah. that's from the stand. That's the stand thing. Don't say that. <laughs> Let's kind of see. just like a cross pollination there for me. I know King is just saying that phrase. Thirty eight. Yeah. Thirty eight. It's that, not thirty seven. Thirty eight. Now I had it in my head. I'm like thirty because I think did you say thirty seven or thirty six? I said thirty seven. Yeah, it's like thirty eight. Kind of feels, right, but like yeah. I don't know. Uh, again, I'm not in the, the stand mindset. I, I'm still very first chapter. You ever had me read from the stand before I dove into that big Bible uh, length of a book? Yeah, yeah. But of course, chapter twenty three, Randall Flagg, the Dark Man, strode on U.S. Fifty one. <laughs> <laughs> he's a good man that flag nope yeah he, nope. he's great nope gotta love a man that titters nope <laughs> nope nope no 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 uh, no and then uh david says jake chamber says it a couple times too yes so yeah it's where you just, do the leo meme you know whenever yeah, someone yeah, says every it. single time i it's every single time because that really like i've told this story before but tad got me into stephen king very very subtly just so I could read the Dark Tower. And the stand, he was wor- obviously worried that, you know, that thick of a book, has Peter ever read anything this long before and everything like that? And so you had me read that chapter. And you're like, it's after the super flu, read this chapter. And I was at your house, I sat down with the har- the, the book, and I read that chapter, and I'm like, yeah, I'm taking this home. <laughs> and I did. I took your copy home, remember, and I read it. And I was like, excellent. <laughs> One step closer to the dark tower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, once once you once you get people to take the pill of the stand and it, like, then there's no mountain that looks that yep. tall anymore, right? Yep. Like so. And yeah. I I took it on my own. I remember that. And you're like, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah, yep. 
I'm doing it. <laughs> uh, still got to get your wife to watch it. She won't. <laughs> you said you were close to Dude, she is her. like full 180'd on me. <laughs> like, oh, dude. I got. <laughs> and also, Jack says the only prize I will accept is Peter's acceptance that Flag is, has good intentions. He does not have good intentions. <laughs> so uh, we'll have to Flag work. Flag is bad. We'll have to work on that no. as, as a prize for the. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> No. For the trivia contest. If that's the prize, and then I'm playing to win that the <laughs> to, to you a, admit that he's bad. <laughs> it becomes like a, a self-preservation yeah. thing. You're like, I'm joining. I volunteer as tribute. <laughs> um, David says, the worst thing about Randall Flagg uh, is he's the kind of guy who makes uh, pop culture reference jokes around people who... Uh, what is he it? knows won't get the reference. Yeah, get reference. <laughs> that fucking that stupid emoji thing. I hate it. it yeah, it gets in my way. Um, what if we do the pop out chat? Is it still there? I haven't tried that. Yeah, I don't know if I have either. But um, all right. Yeah, that that. Oh, it's well. S- no, still it's there. Still, yeah, it's still. Mm. I wonder if there's a way to just like email Google and be like, "Hey, this sucks. Fix this. Get rid of it. <laughs> Move it over somewhere else or something, for God's sake. Just get rid of it. No one. Yeah, no one No one wants it anyway. Although, uh, we do appreciate likes, of course, yes. because that keeps. If you actually like the video, yes. Not just the, the random emoji thing that they have here. I mean, Ooh. random emojis are pretty awesome, too. No, they're not. Sure. Uh, but, yeah, the, the likes are great so that we don't get lightning teeth from Blaine. You know, like Return of the Jedi when Luke gets. <laughs> you start licking your teeth. I can see it. <laughs> Um, but that, that, yeah, that is it for this episode, though. Um, yeah, hopefully everyone uh, is excited for March Insanity in eleven months. I can't, um, I can't wait. There is one scheduling issue for next episode. I'll talk to you about it afterwards. So t- stay tuned to social media just in case. All righty. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and uh, hit the outro stuff real quick. Um, if you want to uh, subscribe to the show, you can do that any podcasting service of your choice. Stream us on Spotify, uh, Amazon Music, Audible, um, etc. If you want to join the live streams, you can do it over here at youtube.com slash darktowerplaver like we had a lot of people doing today. Find the show notes over at darktowerplaver.com um, as well as uh, fast forward 11 months from now. Uh, we will now start having a thing where you can type darktowerplaver.com slash March Insanity. It'll take you right to all the March Insanity posts. Um, so that, that'll be awesome. Sorry. Uh, I got the upgrade done after March and Sam. That's just <laughs> usually how it works though. Yeah. Then if you want to support the show, you can do that. Patreon.com slash dark tower plaver. Uh, and if you want to contact the show, Peter can let you know the ways to do that. Uh, email us. It's show at dark tower That's the best way. And then our social medias are Twitter at dark tower pod. That's at dark tower P O D blue sky is at dark tower palaver dot B S K Y dot social. Facebook is facebook.com slash dark tower palaver. Instagram is dark tower palaver, all one word, and tpublic.com slash user slash dark tower palaver. Go pick yourself up a uh, hashtag Ted is terrible something. <laughs> they have a whole lot of options. How dare you? David asked uh, what we're talking about the emoji thing. Um, so on our side, so- or I guess on everyone, on, uh, YouTube. on the chat thing, um, there's a heart, and when you go over it, it has a heart. It's like a it's like a little built in yeah. menu. If you're um, looking at the chat right now, you can see him but, like flying up the right side. That's but, dumb. But he's but there. But the thing the thing that sucks is it's it's aligned right on the like the basically the the person with the newest chat for me. Um, the little stupid window for the thing is blocking the far right chunk of their text mm-hmm. and it gets to be where it's kind of hard to exa- see exactly what they're saying um so david in your message where you say what is the emoji pop-up thing that the the word that is being covered for us when it was the bottom message yeah so it gets, to, it gets it's to, just a poor placement of the icon it needs for, to not be there it needs to be in the top here right next to live chat or down lower next to the emoji button. Something. It's just in a spot where it blocks the, the, the latest chat, which is really annoying. So sorry um, if there's ever a time we're stumbling over your guys' messages. A lot of times, if you're the newest message, it's usually that because we're having to like try to get context clues. And it's like playing a word game to figure out uh, that's what, what, we what, think. what you're likely yeah. saying. because That's that, what we think of that button. That stupid button. Yeah, it's it. It's it's quite annoying. And usually YouTube and Google are usually pretty good about making their stuff pretty user friendly, generally speaking. Yeah. So it's just that this is one exception. And it, yeah, it, if they just widen the chat just a little bit so we could still see the message and have that just off to the right more, then we'd be fine. But yeah. they don't do that. They have it literally where if it's a two line message and it happens to go over, it goes under that button. So we just can't read what it says. Yeah, it's su- super annoying. Um, but yeah, the, that'll be uh, it for this episode. Um, general schedule is uh, every fortnight for these episodes. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we got an, following uh, the next 
episode we have is going to be a book club, and we're going to be following up and figuring out what the hell is going on after the Traveler's Rest showdown. How much trouble um, are we in? Yeah, we we uh, we've we've solved it now. The sheriff has arrived, um, but we don't know what the fuck's going to happen to our boys um, that just got the better of the big coffin hunters. So that is where we left off. That is where we're taking um, taking. Uh, are up in April the rest uh, the next episode in April um, and then of course uh, in May we'll be back for a round table the first episode um, and then yeah we also have you like or what is it you like it darker um, like it darker uh, you like it darker okay. you like it darker. I, I don't right okay. okay I didn't it didn't feel right in my mouth though as I said I'm like that doesn't feel right we gotta get used uh, to saying it. it's just like Holly that was a weird title for us just like Holly wait yeah okay it's, it's a character okay yeah it's yeah. Holly and then we got used to it. We just got to get used to it. Yeah, exactly. Got to. Yeah, exactly. It's the newest one. So yeah, you got to get used to it. Gotta a get bit. used to it. It's not. It's nothing like you know Carrie that we've been saying our whole lives. So. Exactly. Uh, but yeah. Um. See you guys. Um. Then we'll sign off as we always do by saying long days and pleasant nights. Long days and pleasant nights, folks. All right, everyone in the chat. Thank y'all for joining. Um. And I also love uh. You know that with having Peter with an emoji there. Uh, in the chat it's it's great it's the poop emoji it, it, like it's the perfect one for it it's like it's, but yeah, but that, garbage wasn't that a character Crap. wasn't that a character in the emoji movie though i have no idea i never saw that abomination <laughs> but it was played in your house wasn't it didn't your kid watch it no she went and saw it i never allowed it to be played in my house <laughs> <laughs> i have standards sir oh man it's great so yeah thank y'all for joining and being part of the conversation it's always great um and yeah um we'll see you guys uh soon i, I mean i would like to say a fortnight but it sounds like there might be a scheduling issue yeah. so uh we'll see you guys uh, also uh shortly if you're going to join us on geekery abides All All right. everyone see you guys